Hello, hello. Uh, oh wait, hide the thing. <laughs> hide the thing, we're not doing announcements yet. Okay, cool. Uh, hey, uh, hello, welcome to Game Center Live. This is NYU Game Center's weekly uh, talk show slash presentation slash whatever. Uh, I'm your host, Robert Yang, and uh, I'm faculty here at NYU Game Center. Uh, game Center is the video game design department of New York University, or NYU, and we are based in New York City and streaming to you live from New York City right now. Uh, today we have a really cool show for you. Uh, we have, uh, we're going to meet a student, Rowan Wood. Uh, we are also going to get a peek at a uh, science game funded by the Sloan Foundation called Red Planet Farming. That will be about terraforming Mars. Um, we'll also, as usual, have our news roundup and discourse thing with uh, Naomi Clark and Frank Lance, faculty, also faculty here at Game Center. And then lastly, we'll be ending with our special guest for today, Winnie Song, who is our uh, new faculty member that we recently hired. Uh, she will also be giving a talk today, later, that I'm about to get into. So uh, let's get into announcements. Uh, first of all, Playtest Thursday is happening, as always, tonight, 5.30 to 7 p.m. at 370 J Street, 6th floor. That's where Game Center is based. Uh, this is open to students, students and the public it's for you to just come, hang out, eat pizza, test games. It's a fun time for everyone involved. Uh, we will also be hosting the last event of our lecture series, Winnie Song. Uh, she will be talking about indie dev, her experiences working in AAA at Square Enix Montreal. Uh, she will also be talking about her personal interest in viscerality and violence in game design. So that's tonight. 7 p.m. at 370 J Street on the 12th floor. Uh, this is open to the public. Just get your free tickets at gamecenter.nyu.edu. Uh, Baby Castles is running its last word hack event of the year. Also tonight, 7 to 9 p.m. at Baby Castles, 145 West 14th Street. Uh, if you've never been to Baby Castles before, it's a really fun punk art games kind of arcade slash gallery, and they also host a lot of other events for other art forms and musicians as well. Um, watch at WordHack. Uh, that's a event where uh, artists give, give talks and performances relating to language and technology. So for more information on that, visit babycastles.com. That's tonight as well. Um, now, uh, students, uh, we also host a variety of social events just for you. And uh, tomorrow, Friday, 5 p.m. on the 6th floor, we're hosting, uh, I think, our last Anything But Games event. Anything But Games is where you hang out and listen to short, fun talks about anything other than games. Uh, for more info on that, talk to Danny Hawk. Or when you're around the 6th floor lounge, just look at a flyer and you'll see who's giving a talk. Uh, this is open to all students, faculty, and staff at Game Center. Killer Queen 5v5 Fridays are also another event we run here at Game Center. Um, those are Friday nights where you can come and learn how to play Killer Queen and hang out with some of the best Killer Queen players in the world. That's every Friday night at 7 p.m. in the 6th floor lounge. Uh, talk to Charles Pratt or join the Killer Queen NYC Facebook group for more information or just show up and play some Killer Queen. It's up to you. And since GDC season is rolling around, GDC is a very expensive business conference uh, where you can network and meet a bunch of people. Um, it can make your career, but more often than not, you just kind of hang out and it's a little boring. Uh, but if you want to go to GDC for cheap, it's usually very expensive. Uh, there's a variety of scholarship programs open to defray the cost of attending GDC. Uh, for example, IGDA, the International Game Developer Association, is uh, running a GDC scholarship program. Uh, so you have to apply to this program if you're a student by November 29th. That's at the igdafoundation.org. So visit that for more info. Uh, also the Game Devs of Color Expo, which is a local game expo that runs every summer here in New York City, uh, that also has a GDC scholarship 
program running. You need to apply to that by December 2nd. Uh, email gdocexpo at gmail.com for more info on that program. And as usual, please visit our website, our Facebook, our Twitter, our YouTube. We're very visible on the internet, and we like it when you show up and hang out with us. Moving on, uh, our next segment, uh, we are going to lead with our Meet a Student segment today. And today we are uh, meeting a student, Rowan. Rowan, would you like to come over here? And let's get you all mic'd up. Uh, there your mic is now on. You can put that in your lap or on the table if you want. Uh, and then you yeah, have just clip that to your... There we go. Oh, it's all tangled up. Okay, yeah. just be careful. Don't let yeah, it fall off. Okay, or yeah. Um, okay, cool. Cool. Um, so, Roan, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, what's your interest in game design? And what kinds of classes are you taking here at Game Center? Yeah, so I'm Rowan, if you haven't figured that out yet. Uh, I'm really interested in games from a like systems perspective. I really like seeing how you can use systems to explore ideas um, and how, like stuff you, that you wouldn't be able to do inside of like traditional like other mediums uh, where you lose that interactivity. That's the player kind of take a role in the game. Mm -hmm. um, like whenever I came to NYU, I was just doing computer science, and then I figured out there was a game center, and I was like, that seems amazing. I'm gonna do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, well right now I'm in um, action games with Gabe, uh, which is where the game of me showing uh, comes from. Mm -hmm. uh, where I'm kind of exploring like the system of gravity and how that can let the player have control without control at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so tell us a little bit about Action Game Studio. Like, what's the format of that, and do you like it? Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an awesome class. I love Gabe, uh, GameZillo. He's the best. Um, so the class starts out where you just clone action games like Fly Wrench and Pong, um, and then you kind of start experimenting with uh, different forms of movements and verbs that you could uh, make a game around. Um, and I think the most unique thing about the class, really, that's kind of a unique thing about Gabe, is that like, whenever we show our games off in class, uh, everyone cares a lot. So like, our critique will take the entire like two and a half hours, um, and everyone's just very invested in other people's projects and wants them to succeed uh, and wants to help out in any way they can. Mm -hmm. um, are there any of the classes that you want to like shout out? Um, the other, I, I'm not taking it right now, but the other like best class at the Game Center is Pixel Prototype, uh, where you have to make a game every single week uh, for 13 weeks. Um, Sounds like that's a lot of games to me. It's a lot of games, but the most important part about it isn't even the games, it's learning what you can do in a week, and like, and like learning that you can, even if you only work for 30 minutes, being able to express an idea and see if it's a good idea or a bad idea in like 30 minutes is very useful, and I'm, I'm really glad I was able to uh, experience that. Right, and that's in Pico 8. Yes. Do you like using Pico 8? Pico 8's also the best because uh, it limits your, like what you can do artistically, so you just don't worry about it that much, and so you're more worried about the systems themselves rather than, and also you can't code that well either in it, uh, so you're, you're less worried about it being like coded or art drawn well and more worried about whether the game actually like, mm -hmm. the idea is good. Well, as usual, if any of you in the chat have any questions for Rowan about um, life here at Game Center or about their projects or work or interests, feel free to ask in the chat and we'll try to get around to your questions. Uh, but in the meantime, maybe we should check out one of your games, yeah, the game you're working on right now. Yes. Um, so intro this for us. What are we looking at? Uh, so this game's called Bereft. Uh, it is a one-button gravity game. Uh, so you play, uh, so the only control you have in this game is uh, how much mass you have. And so it's supposed to be for the phone, uh, but it works on the computer too by clicking. Mm -hmm. um, and by, uh, when you hold down, you increase your mass. Uh, uh, okay, so I'm holding down right now, and then that's what makes me go towards Yeah, yeah, you get, you get, you get bigger. Um, and then all, everything else has a gravitational effect that is uh, moving you around. And then the thing that's opening up, that's like a portal that will like, take you to another level. Uh-huh. And then you're trying to get these little white blobs and kind of explore and traverse the space. 
Um, light bulbs are good. Yes, they're like little. They're, they're like they're little friends. They're like the keys and Fez. They're little blocks. Ah, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, this is like my first game where I kind of had an aesthetic, and then I was like, "What's the game?" Mm -hmm. um, and so this is probably the ninth or tenth iteration of what the actual game is, but it has always looked like this with the little with the moving um, little like the like the trail and it being affected by gravity. How would you uh, characterize your aesthetic? Um, like, what's your like? Like, you were talking about how yeah. this game is you finally like figuring out your voice and like yeah, kind of what you yeah. want to make in games. Like, what is that? Is it very colorful? Is it playing with physics? I think it's the physics. I think because physics are something where uh, even I'm really bad at this game too. Sorry, yeah, you probably need to let go. You, like, like, and I'm trapped. Yeah, so you want to use a lot of force to like move yourself and let go so the gravity doesn't affect you as much. There you go. Okay, there. Um, yeah, so it, um, it all kind of works. The, in terms of aesthetic, it's all about um, like there's this underlying system that's fairly simple, mm -hmm. uh, even though it's a little bit complex because gravity just is weird sometimes. Um, and then you interact with that in a very simple way. Mm -hmm. uh, and then... Because oh, it's a yeah, oh, yeah okay. you want to you want to hold it down the entire time oh, inside oops. of it. Okay. Sorry. Um, and because you're like having such a small effect on this complicated system, uh, Get in it there. kind there of gives go. you this more emergent behavior that I really enjoy. Um, like I have another game where uh, it's all about how uh, unique you are, mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's a bunch of like NPCs moving around the screen, and mm -hmm. you control one of them, and you just have to figure out who it is, and like. It's on this face, very simple. Oh no, I went back. Oh yeah, no, so <laughs> I got distracted. Sorry. Yeah. There's so there's a yeah, multiple um, portals take you to different places. It's kind of like a map. Oh right, and then the map gets visualized yeah. up here, right? Yeah. Okay. And it cracked. Oh no, it cracked. <laughs> <laughs> That's new. Game Maker. Yeah. Why? Well, Action Games is a game maker. Uh, game Maker, I like for the same reason I peek away, and that it's very fast to do things, but it's fast and. Dangerous. <laughs> I mean, but that's what's fun about it. Okay, yeah. show, show me how it's played. Show me okay, how Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll show you the, the, show the, me the better. The first Let me turn the mouse on. Sorry. Okay, that's a good idea. Go for it. All right. Yeah, that's what's lagging your machine. That's um, weird. I think it's lagging because my battery is oh, okay. set too low. Hold on. Yeah. There we go. All right, there we go. That's the... All right, so see the like the little two dots means that I need to get... Oh, I'm stuck. There we go. I need to get two dots so that I can like unlock it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you have to collect like the keys from yeah. the next portal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then, kind of the goal of this demo is kind of just see what the map is shaped like. Mm -hmm. Oh no. It's crashing. <laughs> <laughs> gotta love it. Gotta love this uh, discovering crashes. You know what? When this you're is. Yeah. You know this, this is, is game design. This is game design. Yeah. Um, let me just hide. Okay. All right. I'll just try to speed run it now so that. We <laughs> Wait. So do you have a? No. This is fun. Okay. Yeah. So this is part of the work of game design development, right? Yes. Thinking about what's happening and what's going on. So why do you think it's crashing? I think. Let's debug this. I think the error was saying something about. So every time it goes to a new level, it's actually like loading an entire new scene in. Okay. Um, so I think what's happening is that whenever your tail hits, I know I'm pointing and you guys can't see that, but like I'm pointing. pointing okay, you're, we're pointing at... We're pointing at the trail. Okay. So when the trails hit the planets, they change colors. Mm -hmm. And whenever you move between scenes, some of those trails need to like come with you to make it have visual continuity, otherwise you get confused about whether you're, what's happening, basically. Yes. So I think what's happening is some of the ones that are still touching a planet are being transported, and then they're looking for the thing they're supposed to be touching, and it's no longer there, and so it's throwing an so error. So you're getting a no reference. Yeah. Because it doesn't know. Because yep. you deleted yeah. what it was touching. But okay. that, that's it's very new. Ah. Wait, so... Um, can you play in a way that avoids it? Like, this is a new game mechanic. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like, try to play without crashing the game. This is my best, this is the, the most fun I have in Skyrim and stuff. Right? Yeah. How do you play without destroying everything? Uh, well, I just recently made it so that, thi that the trails last longer. So that's probably why it's happening. Oh, that makes um, sense. So I think, 
and you don't really can't really stop the trails from spawning. So I think it'll just show us whether it wants to keep going or not. All right, we got it. Okay. <laughs> Wait, so your strategy now is to carefully... Oh, oh I no, thought I got in long. and out real fast. It would work. <laughs> uh, okay, let's uh, try again. Yeah, so there is what I think it is. Oh, right, yeah, let's, let's, so let's... At least I know what it is. Yeah, take me through this stack. So, okay, here's the Game Maker error. And now, fatal error in action number one of step event zero for object tail. Okay, yeah, so that is the trails, yeah, so, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, basically the tail uh, isn't finding the object it's supposed to be touching. So, and it's, it's supposed to be, it's checking whether it is able, is touching anything or not, but uh -huh. it, 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 and it technically thinks it is, but that all doesn't exist. Wow. Yeah, it's fun stuff. So, you know, this is game design, yeah. live game development, folks. You well, know? No, that, that's why I came on. Because everyone knows you only find errors whenever you present your game. I mean, that's <laughs> also true. Yeah, that's like the, it's the best time to find them. You can also play test. I mean, play I just Thursday. I, oh, wait, yeah. which you have yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah. I love for this. It's like the best because you don't have to pay anyone and you get free pizza and people play your games. Like, it all, like, comes together. I mean, technically, you're paying tuition at NYU. I, I don't want to think about that. Okay, let's not think about <laughs> yeah. that. Let's not think about our student loans. Yeah. Uh, instead, let's uh, restart the game again. All right, and I mean, it's pretty even of one scene. Yeah, just show me, like, show me a little bit about, like, show me some cool moves you can do without changing scenes. Yeah. So I recently changed it so you like, go through the planets and they kind of nudge you instead of just, like, bouncing off of it. Because I kind of want the game to be really flowy and like feel like oh like oh no we're gonna change levels okay oh no if you don't holding down it okay cool like, transport you wait okay so these are planets but we can go through them yeah you're I, the idea is you're kind of like going over them a little bit uh, but also I really don't know what you are so maybe you you just don't hit planets maybe you're like a neutrino or something huh. Yeah, maybe this is like a science game. <laughs> yeah. You should pitch this to so get some money. The Sloan Grant? Yeah, I was thinking about it. Because um, it's teaching us about like orbiting and like physics and stuff, right? Yeah. That's like science-y shit, right? right? Yeah, it's, this, it's straight up just it, like the main crux of this game is just the gravity equation. Uh, so. Um, are there any like games that like, you know, so you talk about Fez inspired you in terms of like progression and mm -hmm. stuff. Are there any other games that like inform this? Um, oh, what is it called? Um, Osmos? Oh, yeah. It's like, it's like the, I, I don't know if it actually is the predecessor, but it feels like the predecessor to like Agra.io, where like you're, you're just a circle, and then like to move you have to sacrifice some of your size, and you can only eat things that are smaller than you, and just like, it's like a simple-ish system, and like it, like if, like, once you're in motion, it's more about changing that motion than like, actively making a decision where you're going. You kind of go into the flow a little bit. Like, I like that aspect of it. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's like osmos, osmosis, like absorbing things. We're like blobs, mm -hmm. but like being channeled by other blobs. I definitely see that resemblance. Um, how about in terms, osmos has a very like biological kind of aesthetic, right? Mm -hmm. um, or like spiritually, like cosmic kind of thing. Meanwhile, this is like flat, colors, like, kind of simple shapes, do you think you're going to keep this aesthetic, or, like, you want to art pass it into something fancy or, or something? I, I think I want to keep this, because I like, I like the idea of, like, before you get there, like, if I reset it, uh, so I don't know if we have to deal with the annoying, uh... Oh, you have a debug oh, menu. Yeah, so this, oh, is, this, is a, this is a mobile game, so I need a debug menu, otherwise I have to rebuild it every single time. But yeah, so before you enter the world, it's all bleak and gray and brown and stuff, but mm -hmm. as you enter it, everything, and you're really, really colorful, and as you interact with it, it becomes more colorful, um, and I really like that aspect. Uh, the game used to be you destroying planets, and so I was kind of going for, like, uh, you make everything colorful as you destroy it, and, like, it's beautiful in its destruction, but then I was like, no destruction, it just is beautiful. Because, like, <laughs> look at it, it's like, it's like everything's moving with its own gravity, and it's like, like, the simplicity begets, like, you able to see the underlying system at its playing and uh -huh. working. Uh-oh, we're leaving the system. You still stay. Like, you can only be shot away. You can never really yeah. leave on your own power, yeah. right? Yeah, that's because before every single thing had a gravitational effect on you, so if the rest of the map was, like, just over here, there's potential for this weird stuff to happen. Wait, so you, like, would accidentally discover, like, dark matter, like, pulling you in some other direction? A little bit, yeah. You would, you would discover things pulling you that you could not see because they were really far away and very, very massive. That's kind of cool. Yeah. 
because on my quest to make this game, I've discovered that most gravity games fake their gravity. Like, uh-huh. um, like uh, what's fake gravity to you? Fake gravity is like uh, instead of instead of like it being that like quadratic equation of gravity, where like the distance the, the distance you are away from something. Uh, as a square value of, of how much it affects you. And it's like an ellipse or something? Yeah. It's like Kepler's ellipse? Yeah. I remember that from high school, I yeah. think. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, a lot of games do, uh, like, um, but they, like, chunk it out. So, like, oh, if you're this far away, it's affecting you this much. If it's if you're this far away, it affects you way more. And then, like, that, so it's much more... Oh, they cheat. Yeah, it's cheating. They, like, chunk it? Yeah, but of? it makes it way easier to play. Right. And there, But their games are usually a lot more, like, don't hit the plant. Like, like, um... Like, some, I called, think, oh, sorry. I think Sunburn does that. Oh yeah. I've actually been able to play it because it's not like it's been. Um, it's not able to be played on like the newest iOS. Oh right. Yeah. Because Apple has destroyed <laughs> indie games culture. That's yes. cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then um, I also wanted to kind of. Uh, I also kind of got a little inspiration from Stellar Smooch by AP, um, where it's not even gravity; it's just orbits. Mm-hmm. Um, you're just spinning around. You launch yourself because I like that aspect of like slingshotting yourself around a planet, like where like you're using the stationary thing to move yourself. There's also a game called Gravity Ghost. I have not heard of Gravity Ghost. Which is a little bit similar to this, but it has a much more like, much more like, like a cute character kind of, and there's like narrative, Mm -hmm. more like story involved with it. It's less about like the science and physics, although it's kind of about that too. Uh, is the sound working at all? The sound is not okay. piped through. That's... We they might be picking up some oh, of the okay. sound through our yeah. well, mic, yes. but probably not. I'm sorry. There's there's a very beautiful soundtrack yeah. uh, that you cannot hear. Yeah. I'm so sorry, Chad. My friend Martin, who also goes to the Game Center, uh, made. I think he was on for Chrono. Oh yeah, yeah. We yeah, had yeah, Martin yeah. Uh, maybe like a month or two ago. Yeah. 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 He he was like he was like I know you're not gonna do any sounds. So I'm just gonna do it for you, and I'm very thankful for that because it sounds really awesome now. And so now, like, uh, all your actions just generate different sounds of different pitches, and it just like it's kind of a sound toy along with the physics toy, which I really enjoy, considering I know nothing about sounds. It's his forte. <laughs> oh, so that's beautiful. Like you, you could go to school, you make friends, and then the friends work on games with you. Yeah. Without you even asking sometimes. Sometimes they're just so excited about the idea, they just want... <laughs> sometimes they butt their way yeah. into your project, yeah. Barton. There's a, and... <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people's games, like in Capstone, where I'm like, oh, I just kind of want to help you, because I just want to, like, I want it to be made. Mm-hmm. And I want to help you get it made. <laughs> and then are people usually like, yeah? Or are people usually like, no, this is my thing. Stay away from my thing. So at, like, the beginning of the semester, they were like, no, this is my thing. So now that we're getting closer to the end, they're all like, hey, I, I, I just need some help. Uh, just figuring out some code stuff. As deadlines loom, yeah. suddenly we drop our guard and ego, yeah. and we're like, actually, I need help. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a very real, lovely dynamic that I'm glad is happening mm-hmm. with students. Um, tell me a little bit more about your use of color here. Um, so... Yeah. If sometimes it's like green, sometimes it's purple, are there like, is there like a color code to this? Or? So the colors don't actually have any like meaning. Uh, they're just, uh, I just spent a long time making a, a generation of colors where they are always really saturated and have like a certain amount of value so that they always kind of like feel like rich. Mm-hmm. And then the, the, the um, hue is just completely random. And so you're just kind of getting the gamut of all these different uh, the breadth of just what is possible, mm-hmm. um, and I used to have it change much faster, but now it's uh, the slower change kind of lets you have a little bit of memory about like oh I remember like this is purple that means I was there when I was purple, mm-hmm. which kind of just like gives you a little bit more history. Okay, that I enjoy. I feel like you could get some good effects with like doing more like gradient kind of things, mm-hmm. right? Um, like having things be like multiple colors across a yeah. gradient and stuff like yeah. that. Um, for example, when I see these like planets and they have hard edges, that makes me think I can't go inside. Yeah, them, yeah, right? I've been thinking about that because I li- literally switched from bouncing like two days ago. Right. <laughs> that's how. That's right. how much so this fast game design yeah, iterations. Very, yeah. Your art design can catch up yeah. to your gameplay yeah. interaction, right? Yeah. I'm not sure how obvious it is because it's not super obvious on. Uh, PC, but it's more obvious on uh, mobile, that there's like a shader on all the circles too, that's making them all wobbly. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh wait, we can turn off the shader, right? Yeah. 
Um, oh, and yeah, then so now everything's yeah, everything's alive. That's just the plain debug mode now. Yeah. Oh, and what are these numbers? Okay, so we can actually. Those this are, is fun. So those numbers are. I need to escape though. The numbers on yeah. the planets are how much mass they have in fake game design units. Uh-huh. Uh, I have no idea what that middle number is. Oh, that's 4,000. That's a lot of mass. Yeah. but is that, that to keep us in this area? So, no. That, I don't know what the number is. I know that, that that's like the center of like every single... That's the average position of every single thing oh, in the game. Oh, okay. And so that's, that's pulling us? Is that exerting gravity on so us? So, no. That's actually just there. Like, these like red circles, is a big red circle, are just so that whenever you get shot to another oh, area... Oh, uh, my crash. Like, ah, I dropped them. Like, uh... There we go. See, it like that's where that's where it, so it knows where to like despawn you from uh, one scene and uh, spawn you in the scene. So these are like culling yeah. distances. Yeah, yeah. And that's okay. and like the smaller red one is just like the extent of where all of the circles are. Nice. So what are your further plans for this? What do you um, think you're gonna work on next and stuff? Yeah. So um, I just want to get all the, the like the movement more tighter and the art to kind of fit more of the movement, so everything just kind of feels connected. Mm -hmm. um, and then the goal is just to make more levels, because um, like all the like all the levels are kind of designed around a constellation. Mm -hmm. So like this is the demo, and it's the Little Dipper, but we can't get to the other sides because it's crashing right now. Um, oh right, but eventually we'll see it, it's yeah. the Little Dipper on yeah. the map. And so okay. then the goal is eventually you get enough of your little circles that you can launch on a big one to the Big Dipper, and then like you're kind of exploring it and like. Finding all the things, all like the unique configurations of like planets. Uh huh. I want to I want to put in moons that are like orbiting around. You're able to like use their orbits to like fling yourself. Mm hmm. Just more like weird physics stuff. Cool. Yeah. Um. Well, thank you so much for joining us yeah, today. Yeah, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. And um, if you want to look at Rowan's other games, do you have like an itch page? Or yeah, I have. I have promo? Yeah, I have an itch. Uh, I should probably just put it on my Twitter. Um. Yeah. So I think you already put my Twitter up. Uh. Yeah, Rowan I'll Q. Do that right now. Um. Yeah. We'll <laughs> link to Rowan's Twitter and itch page in the chat. So yeah. if you want to follow Rowan's progress, feel free to check out those links. Yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah. Have a good rest of your day. Have good class if you have class later. Yeah, all right. Yeah, thanks. See, See you. you later. Right. You got it. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, next up, let's change to our other scene, Julia. Um, next up, uh, we are... I'm going to... I'm going to leave the <laughs> camera, and uh, I'm going to see the focus to um, Nina and Professor Matt Parker. Um, so come on over. hear me can I get the confirmation from the people on the stream that you can hear me can I get a what what can I get a I can hear you Matt someone want to chat me up and say that you can hear me no cameras over there <laughs> it's working now thank you tin kelp I believe it is is that a tin cup reference out there but a some sort of C word version of that so hi I'm Matt Parker yeah, intro yourselves and intro your project and stuff, and I'll get it done. Sure. Um, okay, my name is Nina. I'm working on... Oh, Nina, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, this, you should apologize for that, Robert, but that's okay. <laughs> I've never messed her name up, not once, so... You said Nina from the beginning? No, you no, didn't. I, no. I still, I still listen up. Yeah, it's fair. You should say your last name, too, though. Yeah. If you can spell that correctly, uh, I will personally give you a high five. Oh, look at that. That's not fair. Okay, I, will, I retract my offer of a high five for spelling it correctly. 
Uh, we're here to talk to you about the Alfred P. P. Sloan Foundation production grant that we have here at the NYU Game Center. And Nina's game. Red Planet Farming. Oh my Ooh. gosh. It's so loud. Which you will see shortly. Um, sound is not piping through, so if you do want sound, you might need the speakers to come through your lapel mic. Uh, but if you don't want I sound, I think we're okay with minimal sound for the game. The people want to hear us talking, right? Is that what people want? Can we get a comment in the chat whether or not people want to hear us talking? Yes or no? Can we actually pull up the website uh, for the Sloan Grant? Oh, one of your mics have died. Here. Oh, that's probably mine. Oh, no. Mine is low as well. Yours is not on. You never turned yours on. Oh. I did try. I tried to turn it on. You have to hold down the button. I was holding it down Okay, now now you're good. You have full battery, it looks like. Hey, why don't I let you do that? Hello? But in the meantime, keep talking. Entertain folks at home. Very professional. Um... So tell us a little bit about yourself. Right, so I am a recent graduate from the computer science department at NYU. Um, it was, oh yes, I minored in game design <laughs> though. <laughs> I'm not just a random that showed up here. Um, yeah, and then. Uh, am I back like, on? Can you people hear me at home? Yes. In. Last December, I started working on this game, Red Planet Farming, and then I applied for the Sloan Grant and got it in May, and then I've been working on it full time since then. So and do you want to show the website? Yeah, let's yeah. show let's the web. The let's start with the website of the uh, for the Sloan Grant just to talk a little bit about what it is in general. Uh, so the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation is basically a foundation which goal is to make science seem cool. Uh, which you think, eh, science is cool already. Why do people need uh, to spend money to try and make it seem cool? Apparently there's some people in the world today who don't think science is cool or should be listened to, don't think people are aspiring to be science, uh, scientists enough. Uh, so the Sloan Foundation had this great idea of why don't we fund the arts and then fun things in the arts that make science seem cool. So if you think about movies like The Martian or uh, Hidden Figures, uh, things that sort of show the power that scientists have to sort of change the world uh, and uh, have an impact on our society. Uh, and so they decided that they wanted to start funding games that did these same things. Uh, and they came to the place where they're like, where do we find people who are making creative, interesting games? that we can fund that may have, may or not have science content. And of course they thought of the NYU Game Center. So this is uh, the fourth game, Red Planet yeah. Farming, uh, in our series for this long grant. Yeah, let's, let's uh, here we've got uh, our 2000, our initial awardee, uh, Mendel, uh, which was a game that was- It's Mendel? It's Mendel? Oh shit. Wait, I don't, now you get, I <laughs> no, think it's I'm Mendel. Sure it's Mendel. Okay. Wait, which one of us is right? What did I, I say? I, I've only heard it as Mendel. Okay, go for it. Keep going. A game uh, about... <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, now i got to remember what the game is. Uh, plants it's a, and stuff. Yeah, it's about plants and stuff. It's about uh, cross-breeding plants. It's about genetics. It's about learning how genetics work. But it's not like an educational game. It's a game where you learn the patterns of combining different plants together to make new and interesting plants on this uh, planet. You are a probe that's sent to explore this planet, and so you're this robot that picks up seeds of existing uh, fauna on the planet. No, flora, flora is the plant one, flora, uh, and you combine them together uh, to make new plants and breed your own hybrids of it and sort of explore this alien landscape in that way. Uh, the next awardee was, oops, I did the wrong thing there. Oh, yeah, let's play the trailer, although you won't have any sound on this, I believe. Um, but you can sort of, I'll skip a little bit forward in the trailer so you can see you're going through the planet, you're walking around, you're gathering, <laughs> you're picking up plants, so you're grabbing a flower off the plant, you're putting it on your arm thing, and then you're combining different plants together to make new plants. So you get the seeds from the two of them, you combine them together, and then all sorts of new and strange and interesting plants can be bred from the existing plants that are there when you start. Uh, so definitely check that out. Then there's Astronomy, or Astronomy, uh, which is a game that uh, was made uh, 
which is sort of a, it's a card game. It's sort of like a timeline, if you're familiar with that game, where you get these different cards and you have to use real scientific techniques to figure out how the distance, how far they are from the Earth, where you're checking the redshift or you're checking a spectrometer to see how far away they are from Earth, and then you're putting them on, in the night sky and you have to put them at a certain distance away from the Earth, and you're trying to figure out how far away different astronomical uh, objects are from, uh, from the Earth. Uh, that's a game that was made in conjunction with the American Museum of Natural History, and it's going to be on sale in the uh, gift shop there, so look out for that. And then there's Hypo Eco Farm, uh, which is a game that is about uh, farming and different farming techniques, and uh, you have to do things like raise animals and then take the animals manure and use that to feed the crops and then you take the crops and you use that to feed the animals uh circle of life akuna matata that's not the circle of life thing what does akuna matata mean anyway moving on Which means no worries for the rest of <laughs> is that what akuna matata means uh and now we're going to talk about red planet farming uh so red planet farming is not this game you want to tell us a little bit about the process of getting to where we are now with red planet farming sure so i started making this game uh in december of last year and then well so another uh faculty charles pratt is the one that like mentioned the sloan grant to me in november of last year because he knew that I had made like a very early prototype of like a game where you're growing crops on Mars and he like suggested that I try to apply for the Sloan Grant so then I uh, made a prototype, applied, and then in May received the grant and it's been like a full time thing since then. Um, we've been expanding the game quite a bit with the help of our lovely advisors including Matt and Dylan McKenzie, and then we also have some advisors at NASA that are helping us with the science part of it. Can you, can you tell us the title of your main advisor at Na NASA again? I always forget. He is Jacob Cohen, the chief scientist at the Ames Research Center. Chief scientist sounds like a big important yep, person. He's, a, he's very important. Okay. He has, <laughs> has a lot of uh, insight and advice for how we can make the game more scientific. Uh, so yeah, that's great. And so uh, that's sort of the, one of the interesting challenges of the Sloan Grant is that you want to make games that are based in science, have real science value to them, but they're not strictly educational games. They're supposed to be games that are fun and interesting to play, but just contain science. They're not like, uh, so if you think about the, the movies that I mentioned, they weren't documentaries about scientific phenomena or about scientists of the past. They were um, real movies that were shown in real theaters and seen by people who wanted to pay and go see a movie, not just people who were like being forced to watch it in some sort of class. Uh, right. And that's the sort of games that we're trying to make here as well as part of yeah. this long grant. Um, so I think let's just uh, quickly just show the page for Red Planet Farm. Oh, there's there's who's this that you, in this picture here? That's so I am the person in the pink, and then <laughs> <laughs> the guy. In Otherwise, the... <laughs> it would have been unclear which one was you. <laughs> the guy in the white shirt is our main advisor. And then the two women on either side are like, um, they're like also like helping us um, with like other, they have like other specialties and whatnot. Um, so yeah, those are like the, like the advising team. And I met with them like back in October. Great. Yeah. So uh, I think we're gonna start playing the game. Uh, we're gonna start off by playing badly, I think, and then uh, play well uh, to show, we're just sort of, sort of give an intro to the game. So uh, this is Red Planet Farming. You are already on the red planet, and uh, let's just start a new game. You want to sure. man the, the yeah. Uh, also, uh, at some point, we're going to start taking in the near future. We're going to start taking suggestions from the audience on what we should do, what plants to crop, what upgrades to use, how to spend our money. Uh, so. Pay attention to what we're going to do at this beginning point where we sort of tutorialize what's going on. Um, we could read this part aloud uh, to the lovely viewers. Do you want to do a dramatic reading? You want me to do yeah, the I dramatic? Want you to do the dramatic. Well, it's your game. No, I, I feel like. Want to, I don't want to do that. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. I should press the cough button when I do that. Uh, after careful review. Oh, it's here. Uh, Interplanetary Department of Agriculture, August 29th, 2118. After careful review, do you think is where, let's just talk in a second for about twenty one eighteen. Where did that date come from? It's 
um, a hundred years <laughs> from, this is a hundred years from my 21st birthday. Oh, interesting. So you'll be 121 on that day. Yes. And do you think you'll be on Mars? That's, that's the goal. How does NASA feel about that timeline? Do they think that's when we'll be farming I on think Mars? They, think it's, they haven't said anything okay, so, about so it. So <laughs> no complaints from NASA is how I'm going to phrase that. Uh, tacit consent from NASA. Uh, after a careful review, the Interplanetary Department of Agriculture is pleased to offer you the position of Regional Agricultural Director of our Gale Crater Outpost on Mars. The position will require your relocation from Earth to Gale Crater, Mars. <laughs> Seems like a given. You can't work remote at agriculture jobs. Uh, as a department chair, you'll be responsible for growing enough food to feed the population of the colony. The colony consists of scientists conducting research on the ancient lake that used to exist in Gale Crater, as well as volunteers from Earth that have moved to the Red Planet, looking for a fresh start. Once you arrive on Mars, you will receive further briefing on your responsibility. Sincerely, Bart Tumble? Bert. That Bert? Tumble. Uh, Bert Tumble, sorry. <laughs> or the cursor was the Interplayer Department of uh, Agriculture. So before we click on Head to Mars here, I just want to ask, um, so you're going to Mars, you're going to run this outpost for them. Uh, was it a very exclusive selection process? Um, yes, there were millions of applicants millions of yes. applicants so how bad are things on earth right now is that narrative come up in the game at all I, yes. and everyone's desperate to relocate of, to mars yeah actually part of the narrative that i'm trying to put in this game is that like the farther along you get like the more you start to hear about like how bad the conditions are on earth and like it starts off where like so just just like researchers and scientists are moving to mars and then towards the end of the game it's just like everyone is like flocking there. Sounds like a terrifying future. All right, let's uh, let's head to Mars. Let's. Yes. All right, this so, lovely. No, no, don't click too fast. No, I don't. I, I think want we to click emphasize this. that this is a work in progress. <laughs> this game is not complete. Uh, is the screen done, uh, Nina? <laughs> yes, the final. Yeah, final, final arcs. Pass. Final, final pass arc. for the screen. Okay, so moving on. Okay, here we go. Okay, Gale Crater, population five. Twenty-one twenty. So we got accepted the position, took us a while to get there, we had to pack, take a spaceship to Mars. Uh, who is this lovely gentleman? Ah, this is a man named Marvin De Martini. Uh, how was that name derived? I came up with the name Marvin because like Marvin the Martian and oh, then... I read that. Sorry. It's okay, keep going. And then someone said De Martini as a last name. It turns out Marvin De Martini is a real person that lives in California and he's a murderer. Oh, so he had to move to Mars. It's sort of like an Australia yes, situation. A, yes, it was an Australia situation. So as Nina plows ahead through the game without reading any of the content <laughs> or the tutorialization, I'm on I've done this so many times. <laughs> she, she's done this many times. Like uh, well, let, let's just talk about what you just did before we, we move <laughs> forward. Uh, you've got this little smiley face here. You got these dancing plants. What's going yes. on? Okay, so we have just planted some potatoes. A very classic Mars choice. And we those of you who've seen The Martian know yes. that potatoes on Mars are a thing. So you can put crops on each of these fields and then you can also place two upgrades on each field so we just placed a watering system um, and now there's like this little emoji in the top right corner of this field that's like a happy face which means like that crop is completely satisfied so it doesn't it doesn't need anything else it'll like grow so it grows as well as possible it tell talk us a little bit about what we're seeing here in terms of what is this timeline across the bottom yeah. so there's like this Timeline at the bottom, which represents a forecast. Uh, the game is broken up into like year seg year long segments. So you place everything the way you want it on your farm, and then there's this button in the bottom right that looks like a play button, and you hit that, and it'll run through the timeline and like simulate the year, and you can like watch your crops either like grow or wilt based on whether or not you provided them with the proper like upgrades and buildings. Um, and the weather has like different effects on the crops that you plant. So down here we have like a dust storm. Um, there's other weather effects that come into play later in the game. Like there's like radiation and there's like 
uh, cold snaps, Mars quakes, uh, Mars quakes, landslides. It's a uh, it's a dangerous lot. place, Mars. There's a lot going it's very on. Hostile. But so basically, the the core mechanic of the game is you have a certain amount of money you start with. You build that money up over time. Yeah. You're using that money to build new plots that you can put plants on to equip them with certain upgrades to plant seeds. You're trying to balance how much money you get for those plants versus how many people they feed. The best way of like divvying up your resources, limited resources among the different things you're trying to grow and to feed people appropriately. So let's uh, let's continue with the, this is sort of the first level, sort of a tutorialization. And I was just gonna plow through it without reading anything because she I wrote, wrote it. it. <laughs> so she doesn't need that information right now. Um, but Marvin is sort of talking you through while tacitly criticizing you. Uh, it becomes pretty clear through some of the dialogue that Marvin is not super good at his job. He's kind of lazy. Like yeah. He's, he's just, he doesn't care. Yeah, he's not, he's not, Mars isn't the hot property it's going to be in the future. And uh, also he doesn't think much of you at the beginning as well. So you sort of have to earn his respect and approval. Yes. Um, okay, so now we're going to go through... Here we go. Go through here. So here comes exciting. a big dust oh storm gosh, coming. What's really? I don't know. Oh, we do know because we have very accurate <laughs> weather information about Mars. Huge <laughs> dust storm, lightning, dust, particles in the air. All kinds of things. But because we protected the crops that need protection, they all grew up nicely, and we got oh a bunch of food. Okay, and now so we have a surplus of food. Marvin has all kinds of things to say at the end of the year. <laughs> Just describing, this is sort of like the result screen. It tells you how you did over the course of the year. Um, so basically, we get a certain amount of funding from Earth based on the crops that we make. We also produce a certain amount of food which feeds our colonists, and you do not want your colonists to die. This surplus thing, ignore it. That was a <laughs> relic. Of, again, it was a it's test. a work in progress. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're going to submit the report yes. to the IDA. Yes, and now we are in year two, and our population has increased slightly. Ooh, six more colonists. Well, uh, our population has increased to six. To six. So we, have oh. six. we have five, and now we have six. Oh, so we got one more, which seems realistic, yes. right? We're not going to grow too yeah. fast on Mars here. Right. What happens, uh, so Marvin's telling us a little bit more information about a new colonist arriving. We get new ones each year if we grow enough food, if we should prove we can sustain that many people. A rapid decre decrease in population will raise a red flag to the IDA about your performance as regional director. Let's just see, just for argument's sake, what happens if we go a year with growing no food? Oh, How's that going to go? It'll be terrible. Let's see. Let's just click just that play no button. Food. We didn't plant anything. This is probably not what you should this really do on Mars because you won't have enough food to feed everybody. Huge dust storm is not affecting any of our crops because we don't have any. Now here comes another dust storm. Look at how lonely it looks with no crops. Yeah, it's sad. This is so sad. Let's see where we end up now. Oh no, oh no. Zero. We got no money from Earth. Zero money, zero food. Still a surplus of 90 though, nicely. Um, which yep, we're that's, ignoring. that's nice. Ignoring we're we're that. gonna yeah. ignore that. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna move forward. Population went down to two. <laughs> we only had, we, have murdered four Martians. <laughs> We're down to only two. It's just you and Marvin at this point, chilling on the entire planet of Mars, yeah, or at least so just in Gale Crater. Yes. So Marvin is now uh, getting upset. you a warning. Yeah, he's not happy. Not happy. He might be lazy, no. but he doesn't want to lose his job. He knows how bad things are back on Earth. He doesn't want to go back there. Um, so the mayor, who's who's the mayor in this it's world? It's Mayor Nina. Oh, okay, interesting. Um, but I might, I don't really want to be the mayor anymore. Because they're so mean. Everyone, yeah, and just like, I don't know. Just don't, Does anyone want to be the miner? Anyone in the, anyone, in the chat want to be, be the mayor? Anyone have any name suggestions for the mayor? Post them in the chat. We'll, something uh, we'll spicy, consider. something fun, something memorable. Not too spicy. This is something. The something as memorable as Marvin Martini. Something as memorable. That, there, that is the challenge to you, dear audience. Um, okay, so if the population keeps falling, <laughs> it's hard to fall below two. That means you and Marvin are dead. Uh, <laughs> they're gonna fire you, which they probably won't have to do if you're dead. I mean, I guess they yeah. could. That's just insult to injury I mean, at that point. Though. What would be worse, getting fired or dying? Clearly, getting fired. <laughs> you haven't worked much. <laughs> getting fired, not that big a deal. Okay, so I guess it depends on what your take on the afterlife is. But if you died because you failed to raise food and 
starve out a lot of people. I don't know what afterlight system that'd be okay at. So now let's open it up to the audience a little bit. Uh, who wants us to plant? What are our options here in terms of uh, food to plant, Nina? All right, we've got potatoes, spinach, and arugula. Okay, who, if you want to plant uh, uh, <laughs> potatoes, put in type a one into the chat. If you wanted to do spinach, do a two, and... <laughs> Very mature. And if you want to do arugula, uh, type in the three. So uh, I'll say the first person to put, type in a thing in, that's the kind of plant we are going to plant. So one for potato, two for spinach. Oh, <laughs> uh, we have for, a two. We uh, have we a have spinach. It, uh, spinach it is. Sorry, uh -oh. Oh, subsequent no. two. Well, subsequent two. Oh, lots of twos. <laughs> okay, so we, all the twos will be happy. Two. I apologize to John. It look, Josh? Oh, Josh. No. Josh. Sorry, yeah, Josh. Josh. Sorry, Josh. We're next. Well, maybe we can plant that next. Let's see. Yes. So let's plant I mean, some have, spinach. We have sixteen dollars. That's that's a lot of. We money don't have. We have sixteen Mars. Mars bucks. That's how I like to think of it. Okay, so we're gonna plant. The, where do you want to plant the spinach? Okay, let's plant it. Let's see what kind of upgrades it needs. It needs dust storm, so we can plant it on this special dome we have. Okay. Oh, but there's no dust storm this year. Oh, look at that. What is this year? We should have looked okay, at that. Okay, yeah, we should have looked at that. What's coming this believe, year? Okay, we have a cold Didn't snap. you make this game? I know. It's just... Unbelievable. Sometimes you make something and it just gets out of control. <laughs> and you have no control over it anymore. It's um, just its own thing. Okay, wait. So if we were if to If by plant... mule in this game, you mean you're on another planet and you're doing things on it, then yes, there's mule in this game. Uh, tin kelp? Mule. Um... It's a game that's talked about game. against 101. Yeah, you gave a reference I played it a few weeks ago, and okay, I great. won by like a lot. Wow, nice. Uh, you do have to figure out how to control your resources. There's not like an auction mechanic like there is a mule. Um, but I think if you are a fan of mule, that this game would appeal to you as well. Um, it's not a multiplayer game, so it's uh, got that distinction from mule as well. Um, <laughs> Okay, so uh, wait, wait, you just grew more props. I know. I put down. I put down an arugula. There was people that wanted a three. Okay, but I see a one from. I think it's Robert. From Robert. Yeah. Okay, okay. wait. We'll see if we have any money left over, and then we'll do a one. Okay. Well, we do have currently. We have what? We have six dollars. We have six but I have to Mars spend, bucks. I have to spend five of it on this heater. And now why do you have to have get one? the heater? Because there's a cold snap, and arugula is sensitive to the cold. Okay. Good to know. What would happen? Maybe we should grow a prop that. Uh, it's not going to go well. Let's show the difference between a crop that goes well and a crop that grows poorly. All right, I'll grow. Okay, we'll do. Um, I'm trying to think what we should grow. Because spinach is going to grow well no matter what this year. Okay, let's do some. Let's do some non-spinach then. Yeah, let's do like an arugula here with like. Spinach. Oh, look how unhappy that That's sad face very is. Upset. Uh, okay, and then we'll put a For those of you who are fans of uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, uh, Nina has assured me that the happy and sad green face and red face have nothing to do with it, that she did not even know the reference, uh, which was startling to me, considering it looks so much like the thing from uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I showed it to her, she was like, what's that? <laughs> anyway, uh, so we got some mad, sad red faces right. and some happy green faces. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens to them. All right, the year is transpiring. Look out for that cold snap. It's going to be chilly, people. All right, so we've already got arugula up here. It doesn't have any stars because it's partially wilted now. So it's not going to make its full food production. But it will make some. It just yeah, so we get some. It's not like you get up. nothing out of it. It's just not as productive. So it's not like it's there's not the no maximum. reason. It's better than growing nothing as we did in the past when we starved all those people. That was terrible. Yeah, it was bad of us. Okay, we're up to three people now. All right, they decided to trust us with another life. Should we extinguish this one as well? Or should we continue <laughs> to try to uh, recruit people to Mars? So, okay, let's see, what, what is, oh! Oh, What my. is that newspaper that just came in? And, uh, you know what would be cool? The way that newspaper slid in? No, I, and maybe, you know how like in the movie sometimes they like get bigger, they like spin in and like hit you in the face? I think you should work that in at some point. Uh, people at home, do you think the newspaper should like spin in and come in like they do in those old timey uh, movies? Uh, put in the chat if you think that would be a cool effect. Uh, I certainly do. Uh, so what, what does it tell us about the Martian Times? Yes, this is a newspaper with a bunch of news stories that I wrote. Me, personally, wrote them. And I think they're they're pretty... They're pretty fun. I try to keep them fun. I try to work in some science um, because it is a sciencey game. 
talks about radiation levels on Mars, and then this one on the right here is about horoscopes on Mars, because, like, are they accurate? I mean... If Mars is on retrograde, but you're on Mars, what does that mean? I don't... Yeah, exactly. And it's also based on the, like, constellation's position, like, in relationship to Earth. It just doesn't make... It just... It's unclear. They might have completely different zodiac signs there. It's... Yeah, what is if Earth is in retrograde? What, what does that mean? Yeah. I don't know anything about horoscopes. I'm just trying to use words Neither. I've heard people use around that. So I see we've gotten some feedback on the spinning newspaper thing. Uh, I appreciate your feedback, uh, audience at home. You're wrong. Uh, Look at all these people over... saying no. That's two people, first of all. Second of all, they're clearly people you put up to this. No, the spinning I didn't. Newspaper I, didn't going that. In the I never told anyone about the spinning newspaper. It's happening. Hey, oh, there's a That's yes. It's not going to happen. <laughs> May have been answering a different question. Regardless. <laughs> Um, well, okay, so let's. Uh, th is, are there other things that we should be aware of in the game? Is there maybe some stuff in the newspaper? So the newspaper is some of how we're getting through this world building. We're yeah. How what's happening in home? Um, what uh, let, do you want to plant some more seed crops and talk? Yeah, to, let's do. Yeah, let's boat? do a round of. Well, we did everything last year. We did do a bit of everything, but not okay, everything let's did do well. Some, yeah, we can let's just try and do as well we, as we can this year. All right, I'm very good. Yeah, at this why game don't you? I've why don't you? It so many times. Just look, look how fast it can go when a professional is going. People, this is what a real director of agriculture, <laughs> Gail Crater Mars, know, does when they know what they're doing, and we're not taking random suggestions. Um, oh, is there a question from the audience? Uh, which is the TV that the colony wrote it? Oh, yeah, that's a great what question. When there's say? only two people alive who's writing the newspaper, the newspaper is <gasps> written by NASA, I think. Uh, and it was probably Marvin yeah. was one of the people who was interviewed. It would be my guess in that case. Um, okay, so we got a lot of happy plants here. Estimated food production is pretty high. There's all these interesting upgrades that you can put. So we're having a dust storm and a cold snap this year. So we have to account for both of those things. All right, we're making 22 units of food this year. Like, it's a lot of food for the amount of people, people we have. These three people are going to, it's going to be Thanksgiving every day for them. Yeah, the newspaper could also be, maybe the people on Earth want to be recruited tomorrow, see how good things are going there. Uh, this is an interplanetary paper that we're getting here. It'll produce a lot of food. I think this is going to make NASA happy. I think maybe this makes up for all those murders we committed earlier on. Uh, lots of food. Let's see what happens. How many how many people are going to end up with here? Ooh, Ooh, nine. Look, they sent some people. They actually they sent, sent people from Earth. People volunteered to come to Mars. Or were compelled to. We don't know. Maybe it'll right. come it's up unclear. in the paper. It's unclear. It's unclear how bad if things. it was voluntary. Maybe they're criminals and they're, um, they were sentenced to Mars. But later on, you'll find it. it's kind of like Australia. At the first, nobody wanted to go. You had to send the Oh, people here we've, there. Got, we've got some radiation that's coming into play now. Okay, so okay. we've got this meter... Um, down at the bottom here with this like really nice red arrow. <laughs> that is definitely it's not placeholder final, art. It's final art. Yeah, <laughs> locked in. Um, pointing to this meter we have. So radiation can affect crops at any time. So um, also some crops are more affected by radiation. So like some need extra protection from it. Um, so let's get through this year quickly. We're, we're sure. almost out of time. I think there's another right. thing after us, so we, yeah. we uh, should quickly go through okay. this year. But uh, this is just Gale Crater. How many different environments are there here there are on Mars four, for us to grow plants? There are four total, including Gale Crater. So there's three. There's three other ones, um, and those are. Should I go through it? It's yeah. There's one called Ballas Marineris, which is like the biggest canyon in the solar system. And then the third area is called Utopia Planitia, which is like a bit more northern and it has some like permafrost. And then the last region is called uh, Medusa Fosse, which is like an area with a bunch of like volcanic ash, um, which could be good for growing crops. So yeah, once you build your population to like a high enough level, you get like promoted and you get to go to like another area. And there's new crops, new upgrades, buildings. There's um, new like weather hazards, stuff like that at each region. Yeah, as we said before, like there's the Mars quakes. The radiation is different in different areas. Cold snaps are more common in different areas. You really have to adjust, mm -hmm. and that's 
something where the science has really come into and inform like what the challenge would be in different parts of Mars if you were attempting to to grow crops there. Um, so yeah, so this is a, an intro to uh, Red Planet Farming. If you want to learn more about it, where what should they do? You can follow us on Twitter. Our handle is RPF underscore game. So like um, Red Planet Farming, yes. RPF <laughs> underscore, underscore game. We also have a website, game. which is redplanetfarming.com. Um, yeah, can we see that website actually? Can sure. Can we pull that how, up real quick? How does one get to it? I think we escape out of the game, potentially. How do I go? And then go back to here <laughs> and then click on Red Planet. Ah. And then go to the tab that has, there we go. Ah, yes. So this is the page, so this is redplanetfarming.com. wonderful website. Volunteers wanted, if you're one of the volunteers who wants to go to Mars. Yes, you can put your email here, and you may or may not get emails <laughs> you, from us. You may or may not get selected to go to Mars and grow <laughs> plants. Um, but you won't be compelled. You'll have an option. Uh, but you'll be yeah. able to keep up to date on the game. Uh, you'll be able to see. There's also a link to uh, Nina's dev vlog on here somewhere. Maybe. There's the team of developers. I'm going to keep talking in a high pitch voice. Okay, maybe you could just bring that up real quick. Okay, there, and we'll... Yes, there is a devlog. I think I sent it to you. You can't type it in? Um, I forget it. It's. Mm, okay, so we're going to try and bring up the devlog real quick. Um, but definitely follow along on the. Okay. Uh, there we go. Okay. Um, so Nina's going to talk about her development process throughout this. So if you're interested in the game itself or in Nina's development process, uh, just sort of following the progress of the game, this devlog is consistently updated, a lot of really good information there. Uh, maybe it can help you with your design practice as well. Uh, if you want to learn more about the Sloan Grant or learn more about uh, the games we make here at the NYU Game Center, you can follow us, keep following the presentation. Yes. Sign up for uh, Nina's Twitter. What was the Twitter account again? RPF underscore game. Uh, so check that out. Check out the devlog and check out the webpage. If you have any questions, if you're a student at the NYU Game Center or just interested in learning more about the Sloan Grant from the NYU Game Center, uh, please reach out to us and uh, we'll let you know. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Um, okay. Um, thank you, Robert. Next thank up, you for having us. <laughs> thank you for being had. Um, next oh, up is had. Jesus Christ. Next up is uh, Naomi and Frank with uh, the discourse. All right. Thank you, Robert. Hello, everybody. So chat. Okay. Yeah. Welcome back to the discourse for yet another week of news headlines and coverage of things related to games. Rapid fire commentary. Yeah, let's try to get through a bunch the of the topics stuff of the day that, today, that you want to know. Today, Robert Yang said, my browser can only open 10 tabs. What kind of browser is that? What are you running, <laughs> uh, IE? So um, we'll see if we get past, past 10 of these. All right. I like 12. 12 of them, okay. okay. Fair enough. Uh, all right, so yeah, big news this week, uh, Stadia launched. All right. Uh, but is generally getting these kind of mixed reviews of like, oh, well, maybe this is the future, but it's sure not working the way that early adopters who buy into whole new gaming experiences usually want things to work, which is perfectly. Here's my review of Stadia. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> it's a silence. Not good. Not good. Yeah. Yeah. Here's my review. It doesn't even matter whether it's good. Stadia is not trying to sell anyone on games. It's not a game platform. It's not any of the things that you imagine that it is. It's just a, a sort of weird future fantasy. Uh, it exists, the whole idea and the way that everything works exists to run on infrastructure that doesn't exist yet. It's for infrastructure yeah. that will be deployed like five, between five and 10 years from now. Uh, who is it? Somebody from Microsoft was saying, look, we're investing tons of money into this stuff, yeah. and it's not, nobody's really going to be playing it for a couple years. It does seem purely speculative. It's totally speculative. Yeah. So like, Which seems fine. I guess it's okay. I mean, yeah. it's funny that people are reviewing it like it's an actual new game platform, maybe mm -hmm. because that's what Jade Raymond and Google are selling it as. They're yeah. like, no, this is a real game platform. Look how much money we poured into it. Yeah, I think course, that's legitimate. People yeah. should be pushing back. Yeah, yeah well, the... Well, they're sort of pushing back, but they're also trying to review it. Like, let's see what this experience is actually like. And you know, there are journalists yeah. going around trying to play 
Call of Duty on the train or whatever. They're, you know, this is stuff is selling them on doing. And they're saying, well, like, well, it does kind of work. But it kind of buys into this idea that, well, you really, you really need to be able to play a console game on your phone when you're on the train. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, are you even a gamer in the future? Yeah. Maybe you're a gamer in the present, but you're not a 2020s gamer. Well, there's this larger question about whether or not this is the direction that computation in general is going. Right. Like, will we continue to have these little devices, these that we carry around with us that do computation, <laughs> or will it be more like electricity, uh, a, a thing that gets piped to your house and you plug into it. Right. Uh, and I mean, I think that that's a reasonable uh, yeah. question. I think that's it makes well, sense in some ways that it might go in that direction. Was it Chris Hecker or somebody who was basically saying like, look, all of the computational increases of devices like this one, it's silly because at some point they just get too hot. Mm -hmm. And you won't, you know, you'll have the Samsung Galaxy problem all the time where you're trying to do something on your phone or your device and it just combusts in your hand. Yeah. Uh, and that kind of thing will just become more and more common. Therefore, we have to move everything up to the cloud. Yeah. But the funny thing is that the the what this does to marketing is, yeah, there's this, uh, I think it's in the next article, in the Forbes article that we have as the next link, there's this analyst from Ernst & Young saying, look, uh, this is not an opportunity. Uh, cloud gaming is not an opportunity to sell people on new games or experiences. It's an imperative. Mm. It's a market imperative. And mm -hmm. In other words, this is something that um, industry leaders have to do, yeah. not because it actually offers any benefits to anybody, but because mm -hmm. it is like the inexorable right. direction that capital and technology is moving. Yes, this is a Hegelian force. Right. History, That's how they're phrasing it. history is moving in the, <laughs> the spirit, the world spirit of computation the, is moving yeah, the, in this direction. The Weltschmerz. The Weltschmerz yeah, is so moving this way. It raises a question like, what should we think of it? How should we react to it? Um, the critics are boredom? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I know Lane Nooney was with, um, like made this nice tweet, right? Was that about that? Which is like, whenever a technologist tells you something is inevitable, yeah. you should make sure that you still have your wallet <laughs> or yeah, something exactly. along those like, lines. Oh, no. I'm misquoting Lane, but but basically, yeah, just well, like you should be highly skeptical of, of technologists who are telling you that, oh, this is just inevitable, because really, everyone involved in any technological shift has their own interests sure. in mind, and there are systems of power and commerce that are operating. And I think that's obviously true. Yeah, uh, yeah and that, yeah, that's like Google a, a has good plenty insight. of other ways they can make money off of this new infrastructure world that have nothing to do with actually selling games to people. Right? Yeah. That's like probably the last thing they're interested in, because yeah. the success of a game is wildly unpredictable. Yeah. Um, this is an interesting article. What happens if Stadia wins? It's PC Gamer. Kind of going through and saying, here's here's this author uh, Tyler Wild. This Tyler Wild's um, vision of like what games will be like mm -hmm. uh, in the cloud gaming world. He says some things that are I don't know. Let's let's try scrolling through this. Can we yeah, scroll let's down look at some through of these? these I found these actually. So um, I want to know what yeah. you thought about these. These uh, I found them fairly reasonable. I mean, I tend to be very skeptical of, of uh, predictions, right. pundits predictions, because sure. I think we just have such a terrible culture of people throwing out predictions and then it doesn't matter. I'm a, right. I like bets. Uh, because then it matters, and people right, right. all of a sudden actually putting your money where your a, mouth is. People get a lot smarter when they bet. Right. <laughs> you know? I, I guess in theory, if you're a pundit, then you have your reputation on the line, kind of. In theory, but it doesn't seem to really Maybe work it that really way. Matter. Like a, certainly, Nate Silver is still around. Um, well, Nate Silver's <laughs> decent. I'm not going to throw Nate Silver under the bus. Yeah, Why do no, people start hating Nate Silver so much? Yeah. I know. Robert hates Nate Silver. It's, so many people hate, people Nate, hate Silver. Nate Silver. because they misunderstand the, the nature of his predictions, which were, you know, not they're more like statistical forecasts, which yeah. human beings can't understand properly. But I'm just not sure um, where the, yeah, he seems to be on the, on the the in a trough of popularity right now. Well, people, like Nate Silver. people are fun. in a phase of like feeling like, oh, predictions are just impossible. Like, why should we listen to this? Yeah, but guy? I mean, Nate, I, I think, uh, so the guy that is most interesting, and now we're way off, we're totally off topic, script, but, yeah. but I think that the guy who's most interesting about this entire topic is Philip Tetlock. So he has a book called Super Forecasting, okay. and he is someone who takes this very seriously. It's a very hard problem. It's really interesting. When it comes to things like politics, it's this central problem of policymaking that we all just kind of blithely ignore. Right. Like Part of what we do when we vote for a president 
for example, is, is to think about, okay, what are the kinds of policies that are most likely to lead to the outcomes that we want? That's basically a prediction. It's right. really hard to do. None of us bother to get good at it, yeah, right? Well, some people and, have very simple algorithms for this, like, what I think will work best for me is keep all of the people who are not like me on the other side of a wall. Yeah. Right. So. I mean, that's, yeah, that, we, we do have these algorithms and, yeah. and you know, but, but uh, and heuristics, and that's how we make a lot of these decisions. But, but, but heuristics can be terrible, right? Sure, yeah, like yeah. racism is a heuristic, right? Well, it's yeah, like, some of them don't are, trust people very, that don't look blunt. like me. They're very, They're right? like very heavy, large, blunt objects. So anyway, Philip Tallock is amazing, and he uses yeah. games. Um, he's currently uh, doing work oh, okay. where he uses a, a version of, of civilization uh, oh, okay. to, to, to like run tournaments of prediction uh, of these people who like really take a, make a serious effort Very to do school. accurate not uh, even Europa predicting. Universalis. Yeah, I'm not sure he's heard of that game. <laughs> so wait, anyway, wait, wait, I, what did you think of these? Yeah, what did you again, think of these, um, Robert, these Stadia? No, okay. Yeah, so yeah. the. The predictions, some of them are pretty reasonable. They're like, okay, desktops are going to be much more like other devices. It'll be just like a set top box. And what's the next one? It's like, um, yeah, only only uh, hobbyists will build their own PCs. That's kind of already true. But then he gets into some that are just like, I'm like, what? Oh, yeah, okay, the amount of data tracking will be obscene. That's that's very clear. But then he's like, what are you going to do with, with data tracking? First, the, these two things, well, he's like, games will use your data to adapt to you. Um, it'll adjust difficulty and change the game's focus based on how you compare to other players. So if you spend a lot of time avoiding combat, but then speaking to NPCs, then all the future quests will emphasize dialogue and avoid combat encounters. This just seems like somebody who doesn't really know that much about game design, yeah. being like, let me talk out of my ass about how data could be used. Yeah, design is, <laughs> a, is, is the worst domain in which to try to make predictions. Because as, as I said last week, uh, the process of design is a kind of... Um, well, it's kind of an arms race with prediction. Like right. one of what one of the things we want from entertainment of any kind is a kind of familiarity mixed with a kind of surprise. So, so art, movies, games right. yeah. are in an arms race with the audience <laughs> to right stay one step ahead yeah. of their ability to like understand the formula and predict what's going to happen. Yeah, and so it's and not so a domain far, where you can predict by definition. Right. Well, right. And then this kind of thing, the reason I'm laughing at it is because I know that Valve for instance has been trying to do this for a decade already yeah. and they haven't even figured out how to w have it work at a small scale in any way that's yeah. worthwhile. But okay, in-game ads are going to become more common. I guess that's another Maybe. data side effect like well, I mean, what? Look, Monster Energy drinks all over that death, award-winning so Death Stranding yes. game. I that guess might it's be an good. It's <laughs> ironic, I guess. Well, it's already gone outside the irony envelope, right? Yeah, and then, Kojima just buys himself so much margin for error by, like, maybe everything's on purpose yeah, fully exactly. bad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Or maybe it's an accident. <laughs> yeah. Wait, keep, keep scrolling down. There's some other interesting ones in here, like... Um, Oh yeah, cross game interaction. Like you'll go to sleep in one game and wake up in another game. Yeah, that's just stupid. You'll like move, move I guess seamlessly at... <laughs> out of one game. You'll Again. be playing a spaceship flying game, then you'll land on the planet and you'll be playing an RPG. Yeah. It'll be just like every early um what's like a it'll be just like near automata and all of uh what's his name's earlier games. He's, it'll be like you're yeah. just split from one gameplay mode to another, and that's like a fantasy, right? This is classic simulationist <laughs> fantasy where people still think half think that video games are just a, you know a simulation where you get to be batman and yeah. so it's all about the, the kind of a holo deck fantasy you virtual the air reality and then you became superman yeah it's like no just, <laughs> and then the next one is like uh and then massively multiplayer games will have uh, one million players. Yeah. Another thing which won't improve anyone's experience of a massive. Well, that at least is uh, potentially interesting, right? Yeah. There are technical challenges to doing really large scale sure. mass uh, multiplayer stuff. That who knows? That at least opens up a space. Uh, well, look, that's uh, for new design explored. exploration. Eve Online already has every player yeah. in one world. It's just yeah. they're not all in one plus place at the same time, which is what Stadia would make possible. Right? It's actually kind of beautiful the way the technical limitations of Eve Online yeah. have affected the military culture yeah. of that. So battles are, by and large, large-scale battles are a process for managing lag. 
Yeah. So it's yeah, all it's about like like really the whole different. universe slows down, right? And then it's all about how your automated systems are like dealing with dealing this with like la- the yeah, universe. Yeah, no, and lag. it sort of does have a sci-fi feel to it. Yeah, it does. But, it's really cool. I mean, that just shows like all of the interesting things. There's so much about the design tension with the constraints. Yeah. And that's why this idea of like, well, suddenly if we just had unlimited processing power, yeah. then it would be like the fantasies of the most amazing game designers in the world could just burst right out of their skulls yeah. into reality. It's a very naive um, understanding of how constraints yeah, work I, in design. But then yeah. here's the one that really matters for the NYU Game Center, indie games. Like, this guy's basically saying, like, look, if you are making a game on your own in a small team, you're either going to have to be able to run it on hardware that's like like an Apple TV, mm-hmm. or maybe an NVIDIA Shield at best, yeah. like a local like light machine. Yeah. Or you're going to have to develop it for the cloud, which, of yeah. course, as we know, is like that's much, much more difficult. Yeah. That'd be like you have to take three, uh, three classes with Rob, that Robert Yang's Ooh, it sounds like fun. on uh, how to develop <laughs> games for the up. cloud. Yeah. Uh, like you think Unity is complicated I, now? I, I am not worried about <laughs> indie game okay. developers yeah. in the future because they're wily. That's their okay, yeah. job like is a, to like they're like finding the cracks yeah, and like surfaces. Yeah, like little lizards and mammals and, living yeah. in the cracks we're, of we're, other buildings. Well, specifically mammals. Like yeah, we mammals, are, mammals yeah, okay. compared to the dinosaurs of the the people who are going to suffer are these giant corporations sure. who will like need to make the right bet or they could fail right. and go away. Indie developers who on the one hand have to live hand to mouth yeah. uh, and struggle to you know to make a living also have the advantage of being able to, to be nimble and adapt and find these the new yeah. surfaces and and platforms and and audiences and uh, and and so they're going to they're yeah, going to so flourish if a ship no matter is, what happens ship is sinking you grab your five rat buddies yeah. you jump off that ship yeah. you grab onto a piece of driftwood and then yeah. you hang out on there with those rats like raft rats yeah like yeah. raft rats exactly yeah. we we worked on that game yeah that's right uh, all right let's go on to whatever the next article is How are you doing, by the way, Naomi? Uh, I'm doing okay. I'm a little horse. Okay. I've discovered that. Are you a pony? Uh, uh, I well, I carry around a small human being a lot, which I okay. discovered has uh, the effect of compressing you downwards. Yeah. I feel like that's. I, I now understand how people become little old ladies and little yeah. old men. So you just get compressed by the process. How's of your BB? By children. the way, my BB. Yeah. She's pretty good. She notices ghosts. Yeah. Oh, well, this, that's good. Yeah. yeah. She's like, what is that? She just stares over my shoulder, yeah. and I'm like, oh, there's a BT right behind me. Maybe dooms and BB can work together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, so this, this one. Is, oh, I love this article. Yeah, so this is the kind of thing where, like, game designers... I, I got this uh, this yeah. link from several people being like, talk about this. Yeah. Uh, I, we actually yes. just talked about this in Game Design 1 also. Um, the economy of Planet Zoo has gone sideways. Mm. This is a game from uh, David Braben's Frontier Studios. I actually visited their studio once, and mm. they're in Cambridge. Mm-hmm. And uh, they just have a nice game about uh, running a zoo, mm-hmm. and you have, uh, you have money in that game. You can yeah. use to buy like baby animals or, mm-hmm. you know, to breed. But then there's a secondary currency, which is like wildlife conservation credits, which I guess are kind of like carbon credits. But if you release endangered animals into the wild, then you get this uh, secondary currency, and which you can use to buy even more rare endangered animals. Yeah. So the problem is that currency is incredibly rare. And yeah. I, I bet you they're selling it for real cash or something. Yep. Uh, and um, so it turns out the best thing to do in order to grind this game, is to breed millions of warthogs. Just millions and millions. <laughs> just a huge farm. Yeah. It's like factory and, farming warthogs. Yeah, and then they're just releasing all these warthogs. So tons of players are just releasing them into the wild. Yeah. If you go into the marketplaces for this game, it's just all warthogs and oh, peafowl. It's beautiful. It's yeah. so beautiful. That's how actual <laughs> economies work. And that's how actual ecosystems work. Yeah. That's like well, they're when not they collapse. These, they're, yeah, but that's it's just a process of constant collapse. That's what an ecosystem is. Right. They it, tip over it's and just, then... that's how you that's what walking is. It's just falling right. one after the other. Do you ever notice over, that if you yeah. dig into the earth, there's this layer of like dark soil that's down yeah. there a few layers. I was put there that's, for us, right? That's all of the, uh, the, the, the things that died in the last... It's all the warthogs that came before us. Yeah, it's all warthogs. The, the um, thing... Yeah I, 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 yeah, I love this. To me, this is this makes me want to play the game. Like, uh, right. you know. And... Uh, oh, yeah, there's all the peafowl and warthogs. I just... I, it also... It reminds me of this... I've always had this... This idea, and I've never quite been able to articulate it, um, uh, about the, the limitations for simulation to be effective at persuasion. So we, we, you know, Ian Bogost, of course, a brilliant uh, game scholar who has this idea of games as 
persuasion, games as rhetoric. Games can right. be used to express ideas and to participate in arguments. It's very no noble. Intuitively, you would think simulations would be very good at at sort of uh, expressing ideas, compelling, uh, you know, make, making an argument and then providing evidence in the form of a, of a simulation. Look, look, see how things, you know. But in fact, they, they seem actually quite weak at that. And this is a good example mm, yeah. of why, because either they feel like they have the message that you're trying to communicate hard-coded into them, right. at which point you're like, well, this is not you persuasive just told, at all. You yeah. just told me. You've just made it so it always turns out this way. Right. Or... They have the capacity to go sideways, at which point they're not providing evidence for your for your claim. You know? know, maybe yeah. you've, you've, there might there might be illustrating some really interesting thing about how ecosystems or economies go yes. sideways. But you never know. Like, is that because the simulation is flawed, or is it because the simulation is flawed in the right way? It's letting the light in in a bizarre, like re revealing the truth. Kind Simulations of are very good at communicating this meta point about how yeah, systems, how complex That's, and difficult to predict right. systems are. Yeah. I, I always say that I think the most interesting thing about simulations is whatever hole is left in them by on purpose or by accident. Yeah. And I don't know, maybe that's what's going on here is this like, the whole, the whole is actually that people who run zoos have to like make money and it's kind of crass at some level. It's yeah. not just a pure, and that's what this article, this, uh, the review by the same guy Nate Crowley points out is that it's just a little too nice. It doesn't have like the horribleness of a game like Prison Architects, also, which I think has some weird holes in it. Mm -hmm. But he's like, yeah, it's just all, you can only make a nice zoo in this game. Yeah. And so all the profit making just happens in this weird realm of warthogs, like yeah. right outside the zoo gates. So yeah. I think that's, that's kind of what's this, being This is evidence for my claim that every game is a parody. Like if you yeah, make a game yeah, about yeah. a subject, you're basically engaging in a if form you, of satire. If you satire. want to sound like a professor, you would say simulacra oh. instead of parody. Okay. <laughs> uh, sort of the same idea. Like oh. it's not a sim. That's what it's the difference between a simulation, right? That's simulation of course, yeah. is purporting to show you something about how something works, and a simulacra. Yeah. It's like a parody version. It's yeah. like the, the where the, the saturation's turned up too high. Yes. You know. And according to Baudrillard, my, that's my fake Baudrillard. According to Baudrillard, I'm a simulacra the, of someone who knows about Baudrillard. The simulacra, the simulacrum, always precedes the thing that it's uh, referencing. That's right. Yeah. Ugh, whatever. <laughs> it's sort of true. All right. What's next? Okay. Oh, uh, okay. new Half Life. Wow. New Confirmed. Half Life. Game? Half Life Three. No, Confirmed. No, it's not Half Life Three. It's a it's VR Half -Life game. Half Life Three D. <laughs> did you know that? Did you know that Valve has a partnership with Oculus? They're coming out with some new VR hardware. And wow. the, guess what? They needed a game in order to demo this VR hardware. Why not, why not so they were like, dig up Alex Vance. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to say, here's my hot take on this game. I'm looking forward to it. Sure. I, I, I'm a huge skeptic of VR. I'm not a big fan of VR. I mean, I, I enjoy super hot VR like right. a normal person. But uh, there's just there haven't been that many great VR games. Every demo that I've played from Valve has been weirdly gorgeous. Yeah. They get the kind of kinesthetics and the, the, the ambience of VR just on a, on a level of just art direction. And right. so that, I, I think, they're, I think they're, it's going to be beautiful. And then I think it's going to have uh, Eric Wolpaw in it. I think uh, oh, really? my belief is that he's that's working a, on... That's something to look forward and to. And I, I think he's the, the, the most uh, brilliant uh, writer in video games. Yeah. And so I think this is going to be good. And I will probably buy a well, Vive. You know what's to, kind of great is that well, so this is probably not going to give the Half Life fans exactly what they want. But that's kind of the advantage of a tech demo. It's a, it beholden to different purposes. Yeah. It's not just about satisfying a sort of consumer urge to get the next chapter. Yeah. It's like we have to make this really gorgeous experience to show off this hardware. Yeah. You know, just like all the WarioWare games, kind of have this sort of weird, wonderful quality yeah. in them. Uh, this is kind of going to be the same thing. Yeah. And it's it's it might not be a good Half-Life, but it'll probably be a good whatever I it think is. this is actually maybe more exciting to me than if they just than announced a Half-Life Half PC game. I don't know. I just Yeah, uh, well, because Half-Life 3 would have to be all things to all Yeah, exactly. People, right? You know, it would have all of the baggage of this. Is this going to be a weird thing that, that could end up being great or it might not? And this is a lighter weight gesture. You know, I think they you know? should do Half-Life 3 and Death Stranding 2 should just be the same game. Oh. There we go. That's that's my recommendation. Yeah, that is a hot take. <laughs> All right, what's next here? Ah, okay, yeah. So Bobby Kotick, everybody's he likes to okay. go on to right. CNBC occasionally and talk right. with analysts in All order right. to prop up his stock price. This time around, uh, the CNBC analysts were like, "Yeah, so there's a bunch of stuff been going on with Hong Kong 
uh, you know, the, suddenly it's kind of political. Free Hong Kong. Yeah, but there you, he, yeah. you hear it her, her first. I mean, the, um, what else are you going to say? Yeah. yeah, Bobby Kotick was like, oh, oh, no, no, we're just, we're totally fun people. We, yeah. don't, we don't like to get involved in all that. Uh, that's not my job. He was like, oh, I think it's great when uh, some of these CEOs in the tech industry do make political statements or they, you know, like, uh, I guess he's talking about, uh, like social media CEOs mm -hmm. are known more and more for this, but he's like, "Look, I'm not going to do that. I'm I'm just a fun times guy." Mm -hmm. uh, so it's I guess it goes back to this like games. a lot of fun times. Yeah, fun. Yeah, a lot come on, of just, fun times. Yeah, Bobby Cote going to make it rain. Right I'll give you some Let's fun. get bottle service up in here. <laughs> fun times, people. That's Bobby Cote in a nutshell. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so it's not surprising. This is weirdly tangential. To, like, there's so many different ways of interpreting the kind of politics in games meme. Right. Um, this is one angle on it, which is like, what are the moral and ethical standards to which we should hold the entertainment, you know, companies that produce movies and games that that we right. consume? Sure, sure. Um, you know, and it's sort of like related to the idea of like should games themselves be more you know engage with uh, political topics right. more well, like it what, seems to be a big the, the messy next door, bundle of the statement next things. door to bobby Kotex yeah. would be like i don't know eves guillemot or, or one of those guys would say something like i think games are a really meaningful uh, form of culture yeah. and we're trying to sort of you know have a meaningful positive impact in people's lives yeah right like and that is starting to get a little bit political yeah. Bobby Kotick won't say that. Right, He'll of course like, not. He'll yeah. be like, oh, no, you know, we, we're just here to have fun. I mean, I think um, there's a, I mean, <sighs> is it cynical for me to say I don't care what Bobby Kotick thinks no, about politics? I mean, it's I mean, not, this is just zero I, surprise. I care though. what happens to the, to the people in Hong Kong. I care about the struggle sure. for, for freedom uh, overall. And, and I care about all, you know, the world in general, and I want the way that I participate in culture to, to not make the world worse, you know? So, so right. I do care about those issues, but like, to the degree that I need Bobby Kotick to kind of like wave a well, flag that shows is, that he and is I there are. a better version of Bobby Kotick who's like, yeah, I, as a CEO, I told the Infinity Ward, don't put a, don't put war crime munitions into the game because I was like I think we should be better than that. Like, yeah, like there could be a version of Bobby Kotick like that. Yeah, I, do, I I actually think that that's a good a good example of yeah. where someone like a CEO could have yeah. an influence. Could actually say something. Yeah, and that's not actually going to impact his bottom line. In fact, probably the CNBC analyst would be like, oh, that's really interesting. But he and, should be doing it because it impacts his bottom line. I think right, I yeah, think yeah. a that, smart CEO actually <laughs> you know we we don't need them to be uh, uh, hyper aware of and attentive to the, the moral consequences of their action. Right. We need them to be have normal decency right. and common yeah. sense. Yeah. And, we, and, and to understand that being a moral actor in the world is 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 it goes hand in glove with, right. with making a living and being successful. Yeah, I mean he's basically like a hotel manager who's like, look, do whatever you want in the hotel rooms. I don't care. We'll come in and clean it up afterwards. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and so like wow. he, he could yeah. be like a step better than that. Yeah. Um yeah. All right. yeah. what else do we So by list? contrast, uh, Pokemon uh, now has a core Pokemon. That's great. Uh, and it starts off like this, but then the future evolutions of it are like it. Uh, it it's, gets. It's, it goes extinct. It becomes. It goes extinct. due to climate change. So yeah. Uh, and it becomes there a ghost go. coral. There, it's, yeah, there it is. Uh, this is what actually happens to coral, right? Yeah. It gets all bleached and uh, mm -hmm. and hollow. Uh, so. I don't know. I think it's just, uh, this is just seems, sure shows me. Seems like, fine. So games for 20-year-old guys are just like, look, do whatever you want in the hotel room. Yeah. And uh, uh, games for kids are like, did you, hey, kids, did you know that the, your, the older people have destroyed the world? Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that as we <laughs> discussed last week, there's a lot of 20-year-old guys playing uh, yeah, that, Pokemon. That, that, that too. A lot of adult friends of Pokemon. But I think so. maybe it's easier for them to accept this in Pokemon than it would be in Call of Duty. Because... Yeah, I don't know. There's something... I don't know. This stuff is just content. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think Guernica is a bad painting. I'm sorry. I don't, okay. I, don't, I don't believe in... Like, to me, the relationship of games to politics is so complicated and deep. Like, mm -hmm. I'm more interested in, like, what is the political impact of basketball on the world, right? Sure. What is the political impact of cricket, Right. If you if you read the brilliant CLR James about the history of cricket and its relationship to the the, the struggle for independence in all of these former right. colonial right. No, uh, countries, like that that's how games 
relate to the yeah. world politically. It's it's not just oh, in terms of content. Way. I'm just not a content guy, you know? Sure. That's, but, people but, know that about me. I Amazingly, apologize. you don't have to pick one or but, the other. No, of course, this yeah. seems mm. fine. <laughs> but is this going to like have a positive impact on global warming? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. I, it's, it's just a stylistic the, thing. The you know? communication yeah, of know. like, look, this is something you should care about. Look what happened to this Pokemon. It's also very complicated, right? Yeah. It's a complicated mess of signals and people seeing things in stories that they care about, seeing their own principles or morals recognized I, by a ma major media franchise. It's really complicated. I will be interested when it turns out that this is the one Pokemon that you have to collect to unlock something, and then people start collecting millions and millions of them, and Pokemon right, goes and sideways so, yeah, into Warthog them, territory, yeah, and, where it's all about these extinct, <laughs> and then they actually go extinct well, that's, somehow. That's like really then I'll to, be like, okay, that's, that's really that close to the Metal Gear Solid thing that Kojima did in his last game, right? Where it's yeah. like trying to like like have everybody prevent nuclear war. Yeah, that flipped over and went sideways, yeah. mostly for technical reasons. Yeah, no, I fell asleep. Um, in that one. Okay, I think we, we're almost done. Okay, is that of, it? Is Should it, we look we at the dumb now? meme that it says uh, that we're evil? Let's look at that. Let's finish it off with the stupid meme yeah, that says okay, the, so, uh, oh, the Yeah, the New guy. Yorker reviewed um, Death Stranding. Whatever. But keep on Tell going. Tell me when Michael Thompson reviews D Death Stranding. And then yeah, I'm New Yorker interested. can't spell D&D, &D, right? Michael Thompson people, right? Who's with you? Yeah, me, right? okay, so this is the one we have to tell people about. Uh, no, you cut off the top of this, unfortunately. But, um, um, it doesn't matter. So this is a person who doesn't understand how this meme works because they put themselves <laughs> at the top. Like it's a funny joke, and and I think fairly accurate. Um, but then they put themselves like the, whoever did this meme. Like that's he's from Aberté. He, he, he was at USC and now he's at Aberté, and he's like, "Whoa!" Right, he's like, "Oh, I'm good," and everyone else is bad. Like that's not how you do this joke. <laughs> person i don't know who it is but. well that's that's why he's uh, you know the he came from usc yeah and so if you are in that corner you yeah. don't understand jokes yeah right and uh <laughs> exactly tracy thompson went on the facebook thread uh to where this was posted and she was like oh yeah i i agree i think i'm we're lawful good at usc yeah, yeah. so this is that's the right place for usc Tracy Fullerton. I, Tracy Fullerton. Okay, yeah, oh, yeah. I said Tracy Thompson. Okay, yeah, yeah um, sorry. Tracy Fullerton was like, yes, I agree. We're uh, But anyway, I think we're in the right spot here. We're proud to be lawful evil. Yeah. That's Bobby Kotick style. We're going to make it rain. I'm not, um, we're going to have Bobby fun. Bobby Kotick, let's be clear, is neutral evil. Oh. Okay. I but uh, lawful evil, I think everyone knows, is the corner of Slytherin. I think if we polled the NYU yeah. Game Center students, they'd be like, yeah, okay. Probably Slytherin. Kind of true. I don't know. Well, a bunch yeah. of them are like Hufflepuffs, but they have a Slytherin inside once you scrape yeah. the Hufflepuff off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With that, we'll leave it there. All right. All right there you go. <laughs> like, rinse, and repeat. See you later, chat. Uh, thank you so much. Sure thing. I hope that was Dave. Frank and Naomi. Um, let's uh, move on to our final segment where we have a special guest. Uh, friend of the Game Center and now employee, Winnie. Hey. How do I put this on? Oh, uh, just like snap it to your thing, like, like I'm going to right now. Like that. I think that's good, right? Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So, um, Winnie, first yes. uh, tell the audience a little bit about yourself and your background. Yeah, so I'm uh, Winnie Song. Um, I'm new faculty here, uh, assistant arts professor of game design, um, and sort of area head in training of, of visual design uh, section of Game Center. Uh, previously, I was also an adjunct here uh, for a couple of years, about four years ago. Uh, and then six years ago, I was a student here. Uh, Let's switch. Uh, an MFA student. And um, so I graduated here, and I did some freelance work and uh, worked at Spring as Montreal. Uh, and then I'm back to Lawful Evil, where I belong. Lawful um, Evil, <laughs> woo! Yeah. Uh, uh, I have your portfolio up uh, here. This is uh, my website. Are there any that you wanted to talk about for sure. a little bit? Uh, so uh, as you can see, the first game that's on there is my most prominent one, I guess. And it was also my thesis project here as an MFA student at Game Center, um, which is a two-year program. And the, the second year is devoted to a thesis project. And this is kind of like my MO, I guess, the thing that I'm known for. Um, and it's a, it's a game that's very inspired by me playing a lot of hide and seek when I was young uh, and playing a lot of like 
stealth action games and uh, sort of violent games, things like that. Uh, and I made a game. Uh, basically, it's a local one versus one uh, couch uh, multiplayer game uh, where two players are in a field in a tight, kind of small uh, area. Uh, but the way they are looking at the field is different. So one person is looking at it from one orientation, the other person is looking at the other. And basically using slight screen shading, uh, but also uh, looking at the, the terrain and how it changes based on the enemy movements. You're trying to like triangulate the position uh, of your opponent and kill them before they kill you. And we'll maybe play it yeah, let's play a little in bit a little so bit. Yeah, um, sure. And then you can just slaughter me mercilessly I mean, over I'm, and I'm over. Crazy. I haven't played this game <laughs> in like maybe two years or something. Oh gosh, okay. So, um, we'll is there anything else that you want to talk about in your website portfolio or anything? Sure. Uh, I mean, a lot of these games are, I think, like student projects or indie projects, projects that I worked on with fellow students here or with uh, one or two other people outside of, uh, of Game Center. Um, these are mostly and I think from the break I took uh, from indie development, uh, working at Square Enix Montreal, which is a studio, a mo mobile like double A studio in Montreal, uh, I took a little break from uh, independent development, and I'm kind of back working on a new game. So, yeah, so a lot of these games are, uh, as I said, sort of student projects. Um, they're, I guess, I also come from a graphic design background and a little bit of minor in anim animation. So, a lot of my games are very visual. Uh, heavy, I guess you could say, uh, where um, I devote a lot of time in the visual design and the, the kind of art direction and setting a mood and uh, narrative around characters and things like that. So, Do you know that when we were looking for people who are applying to your job that you have yes, right now, actually, yes, yeah. um, one of them was looking through our like student work and was like, oh, yeah, yeah, you have a lot of room to improve. Oh, except this person. This person's the best. <laughs> and they're pointing to you. They're pointing to oh, your wow. project. And they're like, yeah, that's wow. like, really good. <laughs> wow. Um, and so another potential adjunct, no, sorry, assistant arts professor. Yes. That would have, OK, wow. Glad, so glad that, that was, that was glad your... Glad, glad this person helped me get their job. Your direct competition was <laughs> exactly. like, yeah, you should hire her. She's right. the best. Well, She's well. good. Um, okay, so with that, should we play a little bit yeah, of Bad so Blood, maybe? Bad blood, yeah. Okay, let me see if I can find it in my folder. Wait, cut to the other, cut to the other source. <laughs> Let's cut to us. Um, okay, so um, do you want to talk a little bit about How what Montreal was like? Sure. Uh, I spent a lot of my time in Montreal watching... You stream, Robert. Oh, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, you're, uh, level <laughs> stream. I'm really excited to be here. It's my first time being on a stream. Actually, that's not true. I was on a couple of NYU Game Center streams when I was launching Bad Blood. So, like, I think I ran a tournament uh, uh, for Bad Blood uh, on NYU Game Center's Twitch site. But you know, it won't but, be the last time you're on a stream, sure. right? Yeah, I mean, if you say so. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so. Uh, my time in Montreal was spent, uh, again, working at a studio, so I was working on uh, games that I cannot talk about. Uh, it was very uh, insightful, and I learned a lot working in a big company. Um, but then uh, I decided to leave because I think I was kind of still more interested in making games for myself and, and in my values, which I'll talk about later. Uh, um, during my talk at the lecture series at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. 12th floor tonight. Uh, if you're in New York City, you better show up, um, or else Winnie's gonna be really upset with you, yeah. and she's gonna bad blood you. Oh, yeah, exactly. We'll see. We'll see what happens right now while we play this game. <laughs> oh no. Uh, do um, yeah, let's switch. Um, okay, so this is Bad Blood. Uh, we don't have the sound, unfortunately, oh, that's so sad. So running. This, this game is has a very very amazing. Sound we can try to have. Some of the sound come through our lapel mics. Is that good? I mean, maybe, maybe it'll work. I mean, uh, maybe just to give a little ambience to the chat. Yeah. So if I remember, I think I put in a. Yeah, I did. Uh, so the credits here. As you can see here, uh, it has music by Pierre Benan. Benan. I say Benan, but maybe it's Benan. And. Uh, Bien -Aimé, yeah. 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 So he is the, the sound design and. and Sorry, not sound design, uh, music for this. Oh game. my god, look at this credit screen. It's interactive. Yeah, it was, oh yeah, my god. Yeah, it has all the, you know, the two important, I guess, the people who worked on the game directly. So fun. And then if you go in, you can see thanks to. Uh, and oh, I see Matt Parker, Charles Pratt, Bennett, Frank Lands. So these are people who just like helped me like 
ship the game. The <laughs> uh, in some way. Nice. Um, but also all of Game Center. Um, and incredible music. I think I was introduced to Pierre by my other friend, Pierre De Paz, who was also a uh, Game Center MFA when I was a uh, MFA here. And he just sent me one of the songs by Pierre, the Pierre Benam, the uh, Benam, uh, the musician. And I was like, well, can I just have this in the, in the, in the game? And he was like, for sure. And I'll make a couple more. So it'll be great. Nice. Uh, so let's go back. Actually, also. Uh, Should we get the controls? I don't know how to play. Yeah, I'm going to switch it to here. Great. Okay, so. So, yeah. I'm like WSD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the okay. WSD, and then, so, there's like. Wow, well, there's a lot of controls. Left, in this game. shift. <laughs> yeah, so there's attack, which okay, is see. Um, okay. attacking the spot you're in. That, that's like immediate. Uh, there's a charge attack, so if you hold shift, um, you can, while you're holding shift, go in a direction, and it'll attack in that direction, kind of. Unless you're a couple of characters who can't do this. Um, there's also a special ability. Uh, which is, uh, like, and each character in this game has a special ability that if you hold E, you'll uh, sort of activate. Um, and the rest is just, uh, we'll see, it's, it's, like, it's like some kind of like um, uh, effects you can make to the grass, you can shake the grass, uh, you can zoom in your camera so the other person can't uh, screenshot as well. Um, and cancel, I'm assuming, is just canceling out of the menu. Okay. Cool, I will leave the tutorial on just so we can uh, see here. Yeah. Should we load the volume? Oh, okay. Great. Uh, so there are two modes in this game. Oh my god, this menu is so fancy. Oh, yeah. oh my god. Uh, there's two modes in this game. We're, we're, the normal one, the, the normal mode, is just you and I are just going to fight to the death uh, in this field. Typical, Typical just death match, exactly, fight to the death. Exactly, very Cain and Abel in the field style. Biblical. Uh, biblical. All that. Um, and this is one which is like, we each take turns, it's like very, uh, it's like tag, where one person is able to attack and the other person cannot. I'll just play the normal one. Okay. And we'll do best of five. Oh my god, the menu's just so fancy. I just want to <laughs> scroll through all the options forever. Yeah. I never even want to play. We can just keep... Yeah, I mean... Oh my um, god. Okay, so walk us through these different characters yeah, and like so, the character design. Yeah, the characters were um, the first four that I kind of came up with are the mechanic, uh, kid, uh, and hunter, and not much for uh, hit woman. So these are the four that I was developing throughout my time here at Game Center. And I think one constraint that I put on myself uh, was that is that they were people, uh, human beings, uh, who were kind of living in a sort of post-apocalyptic kind of near future um very it's like a green apocalypse i like to call it where it's like nature has just taken back what it's what it's due uh and i wanted these people to kind of be kind of hungry for either like revenge or, or literally hungry i think hunter the character design for him was that he is uh he just wants lunch yeah yeah, yeah. he's he's he used to hunt uh game but now he hunts the, the What's it called? The, the greatest game. Oh, of all yeah, the, or the, pre, the, <laughs> most <dangerous laughs> the most prey. dangerous prey or something. Okay, like that, yeah. Which is, which, is, uh, which is obviously another hunter. Uh, Kid was a sort of a. I think what I thought of him was like he was like a. A, a wild lad. Yeah, he's like a wild lad. He's like, he's like a cyborg. Uh, he's kind of sustained. Oh, he's like, a cyborg yeah, he's too. He's like sustained by like these kind of like, uh, you know, uh, mechanical parts. Um, so he's like. He's he's poisoned by the air, so he has to like kind of create. Uh, oh, and, like cover his mouth. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Uh, because he um, he's a gamer, and <laughs> there's a, there's some there's some kind of rule where he was like near a computer because he was he was playing a PC game at the time, and when the apocalypse happened, uh, so he's now been mutated, and the way he has to survive is to depend on these like mechanical parts. Cool. Um, and hit woman is she's a hit woman she just kills people for a living uh and she died once and then went blind uh and now she's back uh from death and to to make revenge and mechanic is just a just a cool mechanic lady uh she has this ability which is to leave a flashbang in the in the map and if, the, if another player encounters it they go blind for a few seconds yeah, so each of these characters have, have a um 
uh, core mechanic, which if you choose one, I think I say what they are. So I'm going to go hunter for now. Oh, oops. I can just... Oh, no. Did I... Backspace? Yeah, okay. Cool, cool. Um, okay, who should I choose? Oh, and then the botanist is just yeah. kind of fun and creepy. Yeah, so I have a couple more <laughs> that I added, for, like DLC. Uh, the Matador, uh, who is a Matador. And Ooh, he, romantic. He, yeah, he puts down like this um, uh, kind of diversion machine uh, that makes people think that uh, he is somewhere else where he is not. Uh, botanist is, uh, she kind of puts down this poisonous plant that slows down and um, makes the character kind of fumble around like, a, like they're poisoned. Mm -hmm. yeah, so these are kind of like late game ads um, that I added after after shipping. Uh, if anyone in chat has any opinions about what characters they'd like to see, oh, just ooh, yeah. let us know. Otherwise, I'm just gonna maybe like I don't know, like maybe I like uh, I like the idea of having fire in a dry, grassy area. That mm. seems nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, Hit Woman is just like style goals, I guess. <laughs> so Hit Woman is like a, sort of an outlier in this game, where she's the only one who has a ranged weapon. Her her special is a a one bullet with your name on it. Oh. So you, she has one shot where she can uh, fire in any uh, cardinal direction. Oh. Uh, and if the uh, other player is in that cardinal direction, they'll just die immediately. That seems powerful. Unless there's like a rock or like some kind of obstacle. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So you can kind of hide behind stuff, but. Mm. Any, I think the characters that are the gayest, I guess. Okay, Let who me, are okay who I are mean, the gayest I'm gonna, characters? I'm gonna leave it up to both you and the chat who they think. Um, the I feel like Hitwoman's pretty gay. Mm -hmm. Botanist I mean, is pretty I'm, gay. <laughs> Matador, Matador, I feel like has some straight like pickup artist yeah, energy. Yeah, so yeah, we'll just leave right, that behind. Right. Hunter, um, I don't like he. I mean. Yeah. Is Hunter gay? I don't know. <laughs> so his, we need to ship these characters, his, yeah, right? His, his history in my mind was that he uh, he had a big, big family that he had to feed at one point, but his entire family died. So I think that he's alone now. He's a really lone wolf kind of character. I feel like they're all kind of gay. Like Matador oh. is like a Pete Bud Judge kind of gay, but then you know, like a uh, Hit Woman is more like. You know, like stylish yes, Vogue, yes. Teen Vogue. Oh, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think they're all gay. I think that I would let's just say that's canon. Okay, no, yes, these yes, are all just gay people fighting as each other. Developer, I approve. So, <laughs> <laughs> not that you need it, but you know. Okay, looks like um, uh, uh, Buddha Judge, Bud Judge, what, whatever his name is. He's awful. Um, okay, um, looks like we have strong requests for Hit Woman and Matador. Okay, I'll eat Matador. Okay. Oh, so you can't be Matador. A... Okay, I'll be Hit Woman. Great. Uh, I think. Z. Okay. Oh, no, cool. No, sorry, that's your. Oh, so, oops. Uh, maybe it's like C. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So you can see uh, you have a Garrett, which is the thing that she's holding, and one bullet. Uh, I have. I'm armed with a distraction. Ooh. So, okay. Uh, see you again. So this is how the game works. It's kind of the uh, tutorial here showing how the main mechanic is that we're on one field but we have these cameras that kind of shift us uh, in a different way. So in the first round, they tell us exactly um, what direction. Right, my north is up, uh, your north, north is, is to right. the right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you can see that there are kind of like two states that's being visualized by the eye in the, in the top here. Uh -huh. So if it's a line, it means that you're, you're not going to make a shuffling uh, in the grass. You're not going to make the grass move. So if I move slow enough, as you can see here on the right, I will not move the grass, uh, but if I move really quickly, the eyes turn on. Ah, right. I also just stepped on something. <laughs> oh, uh oh, I'm gonna come get you. Where are you? Uh, so I think one of the options also is that I don't know what your button is, but uh, my button is this quotation mark button uh, that basically uh, triggers the um, zoom in of the camera to kind of prevent you from kind of screen. Oh, so it's like okay, so yeah, remember. Right, this is about screen cheating and like solving screen cheating a little, or playing with it. Playing with it a little bit. Uh, because I think what I'm interested in is like, yes, we are in this really intimate, tight space that feels very claustrophobic, but we do have something on our side. Oh no, like, I hit the thorns yeah, too. So you, you, you made a little sound, and if you saw it in, on my side of the screen that uh, you're now right okay. with me. So that's something that I know. Uh, which means I'm... Which means on my screen you're below me. I don't know. I mean, I actually don't know. I forgot. 
<laughs> no, that means, wait, if yeah, you, let's see. your right is my, oh wait, I saw something change. Yes. Um, yeah, so you don't, uh, Hit Woman unfortunately doesn't have a charge uh, oh. attack. She only is able to kill somebody who's in her, her tile. Okay. But you have this, uh, what's it called? Um, yeah. So you charge up, and once it hits a full circle, you want to aim in a direction and let go. Oh! Wow, you killed me! I was right beside you. Wow, I didn't even know. I'm so good. So this, this, Only because I ran into you, and I was like, oh, why did I, why was I blocked yeah, from yeah. walking into that field? Cool. Oh, no, no, we can be in the same tile. Maybe oh, really? Can, oh, I, I wonder what happened then. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, new speech. Uh, congrats. Uh, so you can see there's a little bit of, there's a tick on your side of the screen. Uh -huh. How many kills you have. I'm going to show on the stream, but it's fine. Uh, so I can also, like, oh, I think I Oh, there you, oh my god. Oh my god. I'm so good at this You're game. So good at this oh my game. god, you know I'm an expert. I'm so skilled. 13 seconds. Alright, let's go again. I just wanted to show you the, the charge attack. So if I hold a shift or um, X, you can kind of, like, Matador, I think, can attack up to two tiles in a direction. Uh huh. Um, but unfortunately, other characters can go faster or further. Yeah, sometimes they can go up. Uh, it's up, up, only up to two. Some characters go for, by one or two. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the characters differ also. Oh, fuck. oh ow. <laughs> characters differ also in their uh, recovery time, so how much time it takes for them to return to attack mode. Ah. Also, in how quickly they go into stealth mode, like um, crouch down. Mm hmm. And also their uh, threshold for how quickly they can prefer before they... Oh my god, you're up here. Oh no! Ah! Okay, cool. Finally. Ouch. Yeah. You're like the bull. Uh, I'm like, the bull. Yes. Oh my god. Yeah. So yeah, so it's like a dynamic cutscene, right? It like yeah, replaces yeah. my sprite. Yeah. Wow, nice. It's like how it's like, kind of give off like all my inspiration in like Samurai Jack and all these manga that I used to read. Oh my god, Samurai Jack, right? Samurai, that yeah. that brings me back, yeah. Samurai Jack. I mean, they have a they have a new season out actually. Oh really? Yeah. Wait, how what? You were making a lot of movements, I could see. Um. Okay, I'm going to be sneaky this time. All right. I want to show off my um yeah, ability. So So what's like your little, ability? Yeah, it's like a little uh it's like I'm trying to kind of like make a uh, create a, a system around like the what's that thing that the matadors have? That, like red. The red cape yeah, thing. Yeah, red cape. Right. In, in the context of this game, it's like I'm kind of like drawing you to this area. Oh, and it's right? gonna like wave things around. Yeah, it kind of shuffles in in a uh, three by three grid around it. Oh. So it'll kind of confuse you a little bit. Okay. I mean, I didn't put it in the right place. Oh, so it's disturbing the grass yeah, nearby. Grass yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's a pretty, like, kind of expert character. I think I've seen uh, some friends of mine play him very well, or not use his ability at all, and just use his... Uh, oh my god, this is so morbid. Look at these skulls. Yeah, so these are landmarks that I'm kind of using, uh, as you see. Right. I'll kind of try to get there um, without actually... I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna try to do it without... I mean, I'll just go. I'm gonna wait with my gun. Oh, oh wait, ah, uh, ah! Uh. Wait, no, that was wrong. Ah, uh, ah! Uh. <laughs> I'm gonna run away. Let me see here, I, I have the same kind of skull pile. So oh, right. So I'm trying to triangulate based on that, because uh, every round, the orientation changes from, from what it was before, uh -huh. so. So I know you're up there somewhere now. Do you? Yeah, because you're near the, wait, wait, ah! Uh, oh, wait, wait, where are you? <laughs> I I'm, don't know. I'm scared. <laughs> I actually don't know. I don't know why you're, why you're freaking out. Oh. Ah, uh, you weren't there. Thought I was being clever. Oh, gosh. I just saw you walk by, but... Oh, no. Wait, you're next to the rock! Oh, my God! Oh, gosh. No, I think you're out of the way now. Oh! Okay. Oh my god! Oh, I should have moved. Yeah, so it was best to best of five. You got three kills. Oh, the okay. This time I think was also you. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh my god! I'm the best. <laughs> I'm the greatest bad, bad blood player, player ever. I, mean, I think. Oh my god. Um. 
Okay, let's try two different characters, maybe sure. this time. Um, uh, or should we walk? Should we try the other game the other mode, game? too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, oh, it only does rounds. Let's do like three. Uh, okay, so we just played the Hit Woman. And the Matador. And the Matador, and we all agreed that canonically they're all gay. Yes, yeah. Who are these other gays we should play as? Um... You play as mechanic? Mechanic? I, I know several people who are like, who remind me of this character, oh, really? I think. Mm. I don't know any kids, unfortunately. Wild, oh, yeah. wild creatures. <laughs> yeah, I'll play this wild creature. Wait, okay, so what's the kid's ability again? Armed with agility and yeah, senses. So agility, I mean that in the sense that like, I think his uh, ability to move quickly without disturbing the grass, that threshold is really... Uh, High, I guess that's the word. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Uh, and also his his alt or his ability is that uh, for a short period of time, I'm gonna, I can hear exactly where you are. So there's gonna be a UI element on my oh, screen that shows exactly okay. the sounds that you're making. So you have a wall hack. I'm gonna have a wall hack. Oh my god! And what do I get? I get a little flashbang. Yeah. That doesn't seem but fair. Like, I can't attack uh, more than one spot away. But I can attack from two spots yes, away. You can, okay. Yeah. yeah. So this is a new, actually a new mechanic for you because you haven't charged attack yet. Okay. So we'll see. Oh, so this is also this mechanic. Oh. Of, um, call it. Oh my god, that's so artsy. Okay. Um, heads. Okay. Wait. So the game. Is, the game doesn't inf have you choose. No, no. So it is heads. So then you are going first. You know what I mean? So we made this like. How did the game know I said heads though? No, I or we know, and we're making this decision. I'm controlling this right why now. Didn't, why didn't you have me select heads in like a menu in the game? I mean, we could But I like this. I like this like conversation. It forces us to talk to exactly, each other. Exactly. And I think I, that's the thing that I was most... In, uh, one of my main design um, goals is to like create a space also within um, uh, the playing context where mm -hmm. strangers have to kind of talk about each other and talk to each other and, and also talk about what they did to each other. Uh, as people who just met. Mm -hmm. So right now I can't attack. Well, I can't charge up. Uh, so if you hold shift. Oh, I, if yeah. I can charge up. Okay. Uh, a, a quick uh, note: if you can see that uh, a pupil appears in your eye, if you hold uh, to the full extent, that means I can actually see you. Oh, because I'm raising my arm. Yes. Okay. So right now I have nothing to be scared of. So I'm just gonna run around. Oh, okay. So I'm a little bit close to you. Okay. Um, in the chat, there's a question by Quasi Otter asking, I don't understand how one person can do all these things other than music, illustration, mechanics, coding. How did you do everything? Uh, I mean, good question, I think. I think in hindsight, I don't know how I was able to do everything in a given time. I mean, I, I had the fortune of um, being accepted to the NYU Game Center Incubator, which is a summer long... Um, oh wait, are you right here? Where are you? Oh my god, you're like here. You're like somewhere here. Oh my god, where are you? And it, it, the incubator is like this really intensive uh, summer long camp almost uh, where they really oh. intensely. Where are you? <laughs> where are you? <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna run away. Okay, um, so you're in the incubator, which helped you like consolidate your solo developer status and exactly. practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and also, uh, there's a stipend that lets me just work on this uh, for a given amount of time. Uh, so that was really helpful. Uh, but in terms of like the amount of work and I guess the, the what <sighs> uh, the sort of sanity of like oh my god, he's so creepy. With all of these different aspects of game development, mm -hmm. I think. I was just, I was, I just had a very clear goal, which is to um, make a game about this player-to-player -player interaction um, that is very, that's like a heightened uh, kind of almost cinematic relationship to, to violence and like um, claustrophobia, all of these kinds of like gut feelings uh, that we get from playing a game. Um, how do you stay like disciplined? Like, how do you how do you get up in the morning and work on bad blood? You know, I mean, you know, it is. It's like a sort of you kind of have to kick your own ass to borrow a uh, a term from. Oh, you're like right here. You're like somewhere, yeah, around, somewhere here. around here. Oh my god! Wait! Oh! Oh my god! Okay. 
I just walked into you, actually. In that case. Thank you. You have to give me a bone. Um, okay, so Eric Zimmerman was like a mentor to you or I mean, something? Yeah, I, mean, I think okay. all, the, all the faculty were uh, mentors. But yeah, they, I think Game Center has this philosophy of like, you got to want it. Um, and uh, I think a lot of the, the kind of skills that they teach here is self-discipline and also like time management, things like that, which I didn't listen very well to. <laughs> I don't think I actually really uh, did a good job on that. But ultimately, oh. I think I was... I was just driven by my desire to finish this game and get it made and have it be played by people. Um, I think like going to, I was invited to the EVO event that happens in Vegas every year. Mm -hmm. um, and I got to oh, see wait, fighting like... game players uh, play this game and like, uh, and um, Where are you? get really Where are into you? it and ask me about like, uh, what, you know, um, what are the good strategies and like, they made friends playing this game. Uh, on, in that place so okay so taking it to like a community where yeah. people like cared and got what you were doing yeah. right and like you have that like uh, signing up for a newsletter kind of system where like they're like oh let us let us know when it comes out I'm like oh, god now I gotta get it out <laughs> and um, and I think I just have a, a high standard for uh, something looking visually complete and, and um, you know looking cool mm -hmm. so, I don't know why I'm doing screen I'm also talking, so. I'm like zooming in so you can't find me. Oh, oh my god, oh, you found me! <laughs> oh no, I'm out of time though. Okay, I'm gonna get you. Wait, oh no, I stepped on the thorns. There's also a set of like buttons that you can press to taunt each other. I was inspired by Bennett Foddy's, uh, what's, that, uh, what's that game where you're on a pole vault? Oh, the pole riders? Yeah, pole riders. Okay, taunt me right now. I what's, actually what happens? remember the oh. combination. Uh, but it used to be very like, it's like, it's I, like think kid, C &E? I think kids say something okay. like, come out, come out, and um, they're kind of mean. Oh my oh. god, what? Oh! <laughs> no, no, don't kill me. I mean, you're just, you're just really showing me exactly where you are. Uh, a big part about stealth is that you, you kind of also have to sneak up on your prey. Uh, it's not just about if you're the one who wants to... Uh, who's the aggressor that you're, you can, um... I set up a flashbang somewhere, but I don't know what happened to I'm it. I'm clearly not hitting it. Let me try to hit it at some point. Okay, let me set up a flashbang so we can see it. I'm gonna put oh, it... you haven't done it, okay. Right next to, uh, this skull pile, okay? Yeah, it's a good thing to kind of, like... Wait, did I do it? Uh, it has to disappear. Oh, yeah, you, you did do it. Oh, where are you? So at this point, I think I'm blinded for a little bit. Every every movement I make, I didn't move, but every movement oh. I make makes oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. Uh, and it slows the, the character down and also um, uh, makes their movement make a lot of uh, grass shuffling. Uh-huh. Uh, so yeah, it, it's, a, it's a pretty cool... Um, I think mechanic is like the most used. I think I set up like a... Um, like a number system of like how many people have chosen one character or another and mm -hmm. have chosen the mechanic Well, we're about end of our time here, unfortunately. Um, do you want to, um, do you want to like rep any like websites or any projects you're thinking about or do you want to give us a hint yeah, about what you're sure, thinking my, about now? Uh, my next project is being a faculty member at NYU Game Center. Um, so please check us out. We're uh, starting. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, uh, so I'm uh, teaching classes here, uh, three classes this semester and two classes next semester. I'm also working on a new game, um, uh, sort of in, in, in the kind of like same philosophy as I've, I've brought uh, to Bad Blood, where I'm really talking about the feelings and the, and the kind of um, intimacy uh, with mechanics and our, our sort of bodily reaction to it. Uh, but the same way I talked about violence in Babylon, I'm going to talk about love in this new game. Oh, wow. So, uh, look out for that. Okay, so if you want to follow Winnie's work, um, check out your Twitter, Song Feuds, yes, right? Yes, yes. Um, uh, Song Feuds, we'll post the link in the chat if you want to keep tabs on that. Um, also, just please, again, come to our talk. That's tonight, 7 p.m., 12th floor of 370 J Street and get a more in-depth take on your whole philosophy and violence and viscerality in games. Yeah, yeah. Um, thanks so much for joining us thanks today. For um, see, streaming is fun. It is fun, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, let's cut to our credits.
Um, so um, I was your director or host, Robert Yang. Uh, news co-host is Naomi Clark. Operator behind the scenes is Julia D'Amato. Or graphics are by Winnie <laughs> Song. Uh, and captioning was by Mirror by Night of Steno Night Cart Services. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out. And um, see you, well, probably not next week. Next week is, is Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah. So sorry, don't. Don't watch Twitch on Thanksgiving. Spend it with your family or chosen family or friends. Or don't even do anything at all, because yeah, fuck Thanksgiving, home. too. I don't know. Who cares? <laughs> anyway, thanks, everyone. Bye.